something, they should say it. Uh, they should not then just try to capture in silence uh, the balance of their of their time uh, without any any uh, action or statement at all. Otherwise, I think we should just move on, please. I agree. I'll tell Chai to move on to the next speaker. Okay. We're going on to Fred Murr. Go ahead, Mr. Muir, you have two minutes. My name is Fred Muir. Your board chose not to certify the Pure Water Expansion SEIR for very valid reasons. It failed to address the impacts on the sanctuary identified by NOAA. It failed to address the impact of reducing water per season. It failed to address the impact on the seaside basin. It failed to address the concerns of the Monterey County Water Resources Agency in the city of Salinas. And it failed to address the impact of not having guaranteed source water agreements. Because the SEIR was not clear whether the expansion was instead of or added to desal, questions of water for the Castroville Community Services District and cumulative environmental impacts were not addressed. Tonight, pass the resolution of finding supporting your decision to not certify the FSEIR, then focus on fixing the problem with the wells, the cost overruns and delays, the phase one of pure water. These pure water phase one issues have caused your agency to default on your water purchase agreement obligations. These facts coupled with the district's financial situation are another reason to abandon the effort to expand pure water as part of the, Mon the Monterey Peninsula Water Supply Project. There are numerous opportunities to use tertiary treated water to assist the Salinas Valley in meeting the requirements of the Groundwater Sustainability Act. The district should be working towards that end. Thank you. Now we're going to Rick Aldinger. Go ahead. You have two minutes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> My name is Rick Aldinger. And to avoid time consuming repetitive comments, I speak tonight for seven organizations with more than 3,000 members Monterey County Association of Realtors, Monterey County Business Council, Monterey County Hospitality Association, Pacific Grove and Monterey Peninsula Chambers of Commerce and the Monterey Peninsula Taxpayers Association. The members of these organizations employ more than 55,000 people, many of whom are among those hardest hit by the COVID-19 crisis. We all urge you to support the resolution before you tonight. Pure water expansion was worth exploring as a backup to desal, but staff from this agency the Water Management District and some community activists with their own agenda have turned it into a replacement for desal. But the SEIR on the expansion made clear the shortcomings of the proposal. Those being the lack of, lo of long-term permanent source water availability and agreements, reducing the amount of recycled water available to the CSIP project, and taking away recycling source water from the Salinas Valley that they need to meet their legal sustainability requirements. The very iffy pure water expansion would make your agency responsible for 60% of the peninsula's water supply. But already you are behind schedule on phase one of pure water, experiencing costly problems with necessary wells and costs continue to rise. These are all red flags. The SEIR is not adequate, does not merit being certified, and the phase one problems need your focused attention. Make your appropriate decision of last week official and legally strong by adopting the resolution before you tonight. Thank you very much. We are now gonna to go to Dr. Peter Adler. Go ahead, Mr. Adler, you have two minutes. Hello, Chair Stefani and members of the board. I'm Dr. Peter Adler, resident of Marina and a scientist for 30 years. The resolution is replete with misinformation. Now is not the time to be bending over backwards to kill the pure water Monterey expansion project. In fact, now is the time to certify the final CEIR and make sure that the public's resources invested thus far are protected for the future. The staff has done an outstanding job both in planning for and developing Pure Water Monterey thus far. Yes, there are some project delays and setbacks as is typical for a huge project with many moving parts, but the 
big picture is one of absolute success and ongoing victories, the expansion would provide extra water for the Monterey Peninsula at far less cost to the Calam ratepayers and far less environmental impact to Marina and the coast than the proposed desal plant. At your April 27th, 2020 meeting, Marina Coast Water District was not recognized as now having three weighted votes instead of two. MCWD presented the facts necessary to establish that its current population easily exceeds the 25,000 threshold required for three weighted votes per the Joint Powers Agreement guidelines. The discussion by the board that evening reflected a strong bias by some board members to make sure that this decision was kicked on the road, thereby precluding MCWD from an important vote later that evening and other important votes since then. Why has this not been resolved by now? It's a travesty. If there is to be a vote on this resolution tonight, MCWD deserves three weighted votes to do otherwise would bring the validity of the vote into question. Thank you. Uh, we're now gonna go to Leslie Asher. Go ahead, you have two minutes. Unmute now. Um, thank you. Um, Let's see my screen. Uh, hmm. Just uh, my screen uh, is hiding my notes. Um, sorry for being uh, new to the meeting and to the technology here. If you have a way of calling on someone else and coming back to me, that would be appreciated. Yes, we'll go ahead and do that. Thank you. We're moving on to Bruce Delgado. You have two minutes, go ahead. Mr. Delgado, make sure your phone or computer is not on mute. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. All right, thank you. And thank you board for this opportunity to speak. I wanted to mention that the red flags and failures of the Pure Water Monterey expansion mentioned by previous opponents of this expansion project were addressed as warranted in the expansive public EIR process that gave all friends and foes of this project the chance to get their comments in. Please recall and remember your vote early this year to ensure all opponents' objections were addressed by delaying the EIR certification until after the scheduled California Coastal Commission meeting in March, 2020. Like any good science, your EIR has concluded the obvious. After being vetted by experts, your board and all friends and foes, this EIR is not political, but factual. And I urge you to put any facts on the table that have been vetted by a robust analysis and a public process before you let politics scuttle the expansion's ability to deliver real water needed by real people at an affordable price and using your own proven technology. Thank you for your time. We are now gonna to go to Dan Turner. You have two minutes, Mr. Turner, go ahead. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. When you interfere with a big payday for a big corporation, you can get a real lesson in the power of money in our political system. As you see the return on the corporation's investment when that money has been applied at the right pressure points. The expansion has threatened the enormous profits Calam stands to make from its desal plant. So it has pulled out all the stops in its effort to prevent the expansion. And with a little luck, it might even be able to destroy the entire pure water project which would mean much larger desal plant would be necessary. Our political system has a legalized form of bribery that we call campaign contributions, not the $100 that many folks give to a candidate. That probably wouldn't even get you a Christmas card. But 5,000, 10,000, 100,000, or a few million, those are amounts that will cause a lot of politicians to do anything you want. 
Wealthy people and corporations can give unlimited amounts of money to politicians via political action committees that are supposedly not run by the candidate. And that sort of bribery is perfectly legal. But there is another way that wealthy business people and corporations can give money to politicians if that politician has a business. And although it's not legal, it is almost impossible to prove that there was a connection, a quid pro quo, between the politician's vote on issues that affect the finances of the rich person or the corporation and the orders for goods and services that his or her company receives from those people or corporations somewhere down the road. So the Calam shills are just itching to get to the vote on this issue because there is nothing anyone can do or say that will prevent them from voting for it. They have been bought and paid for and they intend to deliver. Calam's strategy of dividing our community into two opposing factions, businesses versus the rest of us, has been very successful in impeding our movement toward a public water system. Now we see it at work here, destroying the pure water project. Calam doesn't care how much damage it does to our so community. You have five seconds to wrap up your comments. All it wants is money and lots of it. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna go back to Leslie Asher. Mr. Asher, are you ready? Yes. Go ahead. All right, well, thank you. Um, I've lived in Marina for two years on former Fort Ord land. Uh, the immediate neighborhood is lovely and the Monterey Bay area is desirable. I'd like to see all its cities prosper and have all the fresh water they need. The pure water Monterey expansion, uh, as I understand it, could help toward this end uh, in a relatively cost-effective way. Its plan, uh, from what I know, seems pretty good. It may be imperfect. Um, a desalination plant uh, has some good points, but it's also imperfect. If I correctly understand it, which is uh, the main alternative for more fresh water, a desal plant would draw water from beneath marina, but it wouldn't return to marina any fresh water or even any remuneration. Um, so to a relatively new resident of marina like myself, the desal proposal seems to threaten my city's water supply and seems to be unfair. Um, and it would cost, from what I read, many times the cost of the pure water Monterey expansion and would be paid by many customers in many cities who are already paying amongst the highest water rates in the country. So I hope that you would proceed with the water, the pure water Monterey expansion. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Asher. We are now going to go to Karen Anderson. Go ahead, Ms. Anderson, you have two minutes. Greetings to the board of Monterey One Water, and thank you for this opportunity to speak. My name is Karen Anderson. As a resident of Marina who spoke before you on December 19th, 2019, requesting that you not extend the filing date for the SEIR, here we are again, five months later, discussing the certification of the SEIR. The time has come to approve the expansion of Pure Water Monterey. This is clearly the less expensive option for CalAM ratepayers and will have future benefits for Marina Coast Water District ratepayers as well. It has become clear that someone with special interests on this board is in favor of the proposed, delayed, and environmentally destructive CalAM desal project. The public is not blind to the purpose of these continuing delaying tactics. Please support the work of the dedicated staff of Monterey One Water and let all of the Calam ratepayers and the steelhead salmon and the western snowy plover receive the benefits of a sustainable and viable source of water. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. We are now going to go to uh, Lisbeth Bisher. You have two minutes. Go ahead. Good evening, Chair Stefani and members of the board. I am Lisbeth Visser, resident of Marina. 
Some of you have acknowledged that you are against certification of the SERR because you would like to do all you can to stop the Coastal Commission from considering the Pure Water Monterey expansion as an alternative to des desalination. By your board's behavior thus far, one could fairly assume that a thinking person could see the tremendous political wills at play here. It is hard for a lay person, such as I am, to understand why you wouldn't want to certify this as soon as possible. And if there are issues to further discuss on such topics as source water, discuss and resolve them. Your certification at some point in the near future would not guarantee that Calam would want to enter into a water purchase agreement for the expansion. You as a board would still retain the authority to exercise control over how, if and when the expansion would proceed. If you certify the SERR, you do in fact keep a backup plan at the ready. Who wouldn't want a plan B when we are talking about water, the one thing we all absolutely need to live? KLM's desalination project has been and is facing significant delays, including Monterey Superior Court's stay of the con construction of the desal plant itself outside of the coastal zone. This injunction first took place last October and has been upheld. It is now the end of May. So back to the puzzle. Why wouldn't you want to show good faith and respect the investment made in the, finance, in the final SERI by your staff and the consultants involved? Please do not adopt this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. We are now gonna to go to Helen Shamble. Go ahead, you have two minutes. Ms. Shamble, please ensure that your phone is mute, not on mute. Got it. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. My name is Helen Spee Shamble and I'm a homeowner in East Garrison in the former Fort Ord. First off, I must say I'm surprised at the agenda for this meeting because I figured the only reason for holding a special meeting would be to rectify the mistake you made at the last meeting when you refused to give Marina Coast its appropriate number of weighted votes based on population. How about you fix that problem before you go on to anything else? But speaking of anything else, evidently some members want to scuttle the hard won EIR, instead sticking with the desal plant and sticking it to the ratepayers of the area. There are a few possible reasons for charging ahead with a huge desal plant. Maybe it's because you, as a board member, would like to see the Monterey Peninsula look like Southern California. Houses, shopping malls, and freeways from the sea to the Gabalans. If that's your vision, say so out loud and let the voters decide if they agree. Or maybe you think a backup plan is not needed and science can take a backseat to politics. Seems to me if we've learned anything about this world in the last few months, it would be that for one thing, science is important. And for another, never scuttle your backup plan. You never know when the world will change and you'll need all the information you can get. We can already see that you're taking advantage of, of us all sheltering in place to get business done to your liking. We may be at home, but we are paying attention. Thank you. We are now gonna to go to Phil Wellman. Go ahead, you have two minutes. Hello there, Phil Wellman here, Public Water Now. Calam is currently doing everything in its power to subvert the will of the people on the Monterey Peninsula. It's using this board to try and force us to accept their $1.2 billion desal plant and pay for it. This certainly isn't the first time Calam has put profit way ahead of people. Remember this? Over the last 25 years, Calam has charged us $34 million for three failed water projects, $152 million to tear down the San Clemente Dam, and $64 million for water we didn't use after they asked us to conserve and they've produced no new water. Working closely with the community, it took Monterey One Water only five years to build an innovative recycled water plant that will provide the peninsula with all the water we'll need for the next 30 years. A huge thank you to the Monterey One Water's hardworking staff for making that happen. Now let's look at the flip side. Clinging to their flawed desal plan, 
CalAM has launched a desperate disinformation campaign in an attempt to undermine Monterey One Water's expansion, a project that would meet the peninsula's needs for $1 billion less than their desal plant. Let's get real. Given CalAM's history of failures, what are the chances their desal plant will ever be built? Kill the expansion project, and who will the peninsula turn to when CalAM fails again? Thank you. We are now going to go to Rick Hoyer. Go ahead, you have two minutes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, I'm Rick Hoyer. I'm president of the Monterey Peninsula Taxpayers Association. Last week, uh, you had a long hearing dealing with the budget realities for your organization, and you were beginning to float major increases in rates as a way of solving it. Moving forward with the expansion, only cost increases the likelihood of increased rates and substantially increased rates. There's been a lot of talk about the need for a backup plan and other aspects. The thing that hasn't been a lot of talk on is all the water that is proposed for the expansion comes out of the Salinas Valley to the detriment of the Salinas Valley and its major needs. There is no long-term so viable source of water that's been identified for the expansion. And this is provided you even able to get the first phase to be working as promised and totally up and going, which you need to do first to make sure that show that it's really a true viable project and any potential expansion could be viable if you could find water for it. It's not misinformation. It's not any of that other when you start listening to the Monterey County Water Resource Agency, the State Water Resources Board, the uh, Sanctuary District, and others raising major issues with the SEIR that have not been addressed in the SEIR and really bring into question its entire viability. If you don't have a long-term water supply that isn't impacting other folks and causing them issues, you don't have a project. You need to focus on getting your finances straight now and getting the existing project working. I urge you to support the resolution before you. We are now gonna to go to Pat. Pat, go ahead, you have two minutes. Pat, please ensure that your microphone is not muted. Okay now? Yes. Okay. Pat Benza, City of Monterey. Um, I am a big supporter of utilizing all the resources that Monterey One Water Recycling Project can do. I live on the peninsula and I pay for my water here. I resent that two of the people voting against the expansion of the recycling do not pay those bills and are not sitting on this board to help provide water to the peninsula in the most cost-effective way. It has been shown in the SEIR by the wonderful Monterey One Water staff, the work done by Dave Stoltz and the, Monter and the Monterey Regional Water Management District, and now by an independent study by Dr. Lon House for the city of Marina, the, the expansion of Monterey One Water Recycling Project is the way to go to provide enough water for the peninsula for many years to come. What Mr. Gaglioni is stating in this re resolution is just false. This board should be a supporter of all that Monterey One Water can do and not be putting roadblocks in the way. As elected officials, you should be representing the majority of the residents affected by this project. I would like to know why the three board members who consistently vote against the expansion know so much more than the water engineer scientists. I don't think you do, but rather are supporting a special interest. Thank you very much. We are now going to go to WW Not User. Go ahead, you have two minutes. If you want to state your name for the record, please. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, good. 
Uh, hello, uh, my name is Walt Notley. I'm a uh, Monterey Peninsula ratepayer. And uh, the ongoing attempt to impede the expansion project leaves businesses and ratepayers with water security concerns. It is very likely that desalination will be, de will be delayed more than PWMX because of disastrous environmental and social justice issues. Calam supporters are acting out of unmoded facts and beliefs are not looking at Calam's track record. Desalination will more than double our most expensive water rates and create an environmental catastrophe. More recent people, uh, reports have conclusively shown that the expansion project will produce more than enough water for everyone. The record shows that Calam is so focused on project that the projects they have started or tried have only created more problems and left us with increasing costs. Calam has shown no sensitivity, to, uh, no sensitivity to marina and how diesel will impact them and their fresh water supply. Dana supporters have been consistently distorted facts on the expansion project and have offensively, offensively discredited the Measure J campaign and the will of the voters. It is ironic that the local tourist business believe that tourism, uh, the tourists will want to continue to visit here with all those dire consequences. Is this what they want to leave future generations with? And also the agriculture and Salinas residents are not immune from these consequences. The current crisis have graphically shown how we are all interconnected. Recycling, water recycling is already working, available, and it's the best, uh, the, the better ratepayer and actually the best ratepayer business environmental alternative. Please, please reject the resolution before you. My best compliments to the M1, uh, M1W staff for their hard work in providing the area with the most cost effective source of new water. Thank you. We are now gonna to go to Sarah Wan. Go ahead, you have two minutes. Ms. Wan, please make sure that your microphone is not muted. You'll see on the on the bottom panel. Can you hear? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. On behalf of the Western Alliance for Nature, as former chair of the Coastal Commission, I am deeply disturbed by what is taking place. The decision to recommend denial of the expansion is not an independent one. It's clearly linked to the desal project. And, and Gagliano has Gagliani has stated so. It seems that what should be independent agencies are so closely in bed with CalAM that you're attempting to interfere with the Coastal Commission's ability to make an independent decision. Because let's face it, that's what this is all about. You're so committing to aiding an ill-conceived project that you try to justify your actions with statements that are completely contradicted by the facts. There is sufficient supply and all of the experts say so. Worst of all, I've been on enough boards and commissions to know when I can smell collaboration and collusion. The decision to do this was clearly orchestrated, not only the vote to kill the expansion, but the timing of this so that there could not be sufficient time for the public to deal with it or even file a TRO since your vote was illegal. There is no good reason for it. Simply withholding the SEIR does not mean the expansion will go forward without Calam agreeing to it. The, and its only purpose is for the purpose of in, interfering the Coastal Commission's decision and for your support of a totally unwise project that will drive people from their homes and destroy the environment. As for the problems faced right now, ju to justify, come on, uh, no project of this nature moves forward without some bumps along the way, and you know it. Do you think the desal project will? They must use the same type of injection wells. You have completely ignored the statements and analysis of your professional experts, people who have been educated and trained in this and have been serving you well. Your comments are abusive of your staff who deserve your support. It does not bode well for the future of this agency. Please deny the resolution. And for the members of the public waiting to speak, once I call your name and unmute your microphone, on the bottom panel of Zoom, you'll see your the ability to unmute yourself as well. But you won't see that until I give you permission to uh, make your comments. We are now gonna go to Meckles. You have two minutes to speak. Go ahead. Good. Please ensure that your microphone is not muted. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. My name is Mark Eccles and I'm a 30 year resident of Pacific Grove. And, um, and you've heard on behalf of the people who want to deny uh, 
the uh, expansion of the um, water recycling project, a pack of lies. Simple as that. I draw your attention to a New York Times National Sunday article on May 10th, 2020. All 98 environmental rules the Trump administration is revolting, revoking or rolling back. And there's 98 of them, um, and um, including air pollution, drilling, infrastructure and planning, animals, water pollution, toxic substances and safety. And um, this desal plant is proposed to be in the most um, subject to erosion on the entire coast of California. I think most people are aware of that. Uh, in a storm on a king tide, it may not be there. There may not be um, a cannery row in the future uh, if things keep going the way they are, unless we change our ways. And this is a one moment for us to change our ways, as well as it is for uh, nationally to change our ways in the face of this uh, uh, coronavirus. Um, uh, the uh, desal, uh, the state has already said that the desal uh, is, they, the staff doesn't, uh, doesn't recommend it on this uh, California Coastal Commission. So what we're doing here is representing, the three people are representing Cal-Am, they're representing people who are, are fishing for the new sardine, the tourists that come here. And it's just ridiculous what they've done. I'm happy to say that the mayor of Pacific Grove is in favor of, uh, of the recycle plant. Um, so uh, those three people, I'll make it as succinct as I can. They're casting their, their vote for Donald Trump uh, ahead of time, an early vote for him. Thank you, bye. We have about 30 people wanting to speak. We didn't make this announcement, but if you're via phone, Yes, the way to raise your hand is by pressing star nine on your phone. We are now going to go to Tom R2. Go ahead. You have two minutes. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, my name is Tom Raleigh. I live in Monterey. I've been involved for 30 years as a representative from Monterey Peninsula Taxpayers Association following water issues. I was there when the EIR was approved for the uh, basic uh, Monterey, uh, public water Monterey. Um, I probably, I doubt if there's very many people even left on the board now that were there, probably a few. But I would urge tonight that the board approve the resolution and the findings, which are very thorough, that show why the draft supplementary EIR is just plain faulty. And at least at present, the project, the proposed expansion is infeasible. Um, there's some faulty data that was given and produced by the Monterey Peninsula Water Management District, General Manager Stolt, on his water supply and demand study. I unfortunately, I lost my connection at your meeting of May, of at correction, April 27th, and I wasn't able to say four reasons why that was faulty, that his study is faulty. He is spry, he overestimates, for example, ASR, the average output. It hasn't ever reached that. And besides, seven out of 10 years are dry years when we're not likely to have excess flows in the Carmel River. Three other reasons that underestimated in his study, the housing, especially affordable housing needs, and that's been rebutted in spades by all the general, the uh, city managers of the, of the main cities in the peninsula. As a realtor, I know we are crippled now with lack of water for small and medium-sized businesses. That's why our jobs housing balance is not in balance. The final thing is the needs for the DOD facilities for water in the future is not even, it's finessed in the study. So I urge you to adopt the resolution and findings. Thank you very much. We are now gonna to go to the phone number ending in 0312. Go ahead, you have two minutes. Okay, uh, M.A. Copernol, uh, I am brokenhearted over the angry turmoil and heart-wrenching divisiveness around the PWM expansion. While certification doesn't approve the project, certification strengthens public trust that 1 million taxpayer dollars produced a prudent practical plan B. To ensure valuable use of water resources, marina and seaside citizens suffered significant life disruption 
during the installation of recycled water conveyance pipes. Even deeper heartbreak is related to the Salinas Valley Basin, which is on California's critically overdrafted groundwater basin list. I am heartbroken because the health of this basin, along with the health and welfare of our entire region, is at stake. If Calam is allowed to repeat what it did to the Carmel River and adjudicate its seaside basin, then Salinas Valley Basin will be at risk for its own CDO. Salinas and Marina are doing a phenomenal job working together to save the Salinas Valley Basin. Their inspirational teamwork supports California's mandated SIGMA and GSAs that protect and replenish the basin. This vigorous, dedicated work is not anti-CALAM. Rather, it is pro-benefit, pro-survival for all our communities from West Coastline to Salinas Valley, from North to South County. I am heartbroken because, like you, I cherish the Salinas Valley Basin for the great gift and blessing that it is. I fear a future tragedy if we don't stop this acrimony. Let's open our hearts to working together. We all are in this together, not just the pandemic. Our futures compel us to collaborate creatively, interdependently, and synergistically. Be kind, be brave, be positive. And thank you all for your professionalism and great, outstanding job to the staff. We are now going to go to Dwayne. You have two minutes. Go ahead. Please ensure that your microphone. Go ahead. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, OK. I've never used this before, so I'm not really terribly familiar with the process, but I guess I am online, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I've been following this for <laughs> over the last year, trying to keep up with it because it's been really convoluted and it's been going all over the place. But what I can tell you is I've lived here and my mother before me, starting in the 1930s when she first came out here and from Stanford to visit Carmel. And then she moved up here in, in the 60s. And I finally ended up moving here uh, around 2000 and have made it my home. And what I've noticed over the years is the amazing change in the utility costs. Uh, and I've also noticed and didn't realize before how much corporations are so really Un, un, uncaring about their customers when it comes when it gets to a money basis they're they're more more concerned about their stockholders and we've seen that in pg and e when we ended up with these horrible fires because they didn't do maintenance we had a, in fact we had an explosion right here in carmel and calam which is owned by a huge company back east california i think it's california american is basically in the, in the same position. They're, they have tremendous monetary powers and influence through lobbying and all sorts of methods, and I'm sure through influencing politicians and people on boards like this. You guys have been doing an amazing job, by the way. But I am concerned, and I only have eight seconds, I am concerned about the direction things are going, and we finally have a recycling program that looks like it'll work. We should be supporting it. I'll let you go with that. Thank you. We are now going to go to Darren Dillon. Go ahead. You have two minutes. All right. Thank you. Um, after I'm done speaking, my wife also wants to speak. So um, uh, I want to thank you. Uh, thank everyone for taking the time to listen to public comment on this critical issue. Uh, my wife and I live in Marina and consider the safety of our water system a critical and central, central issue to us. Um, in today's world, recycling just makes sense. It is the thing to do. Um, everyone should be doing it. Um, and this is an opportunity for us to do it here on the Monterey Bay. Using Cal-Am's leverage to put in a desal plant that adversely affects Marina at the benefit of others isn't the way to go. And by the way, if anything goes wrong with Cal-Am in Marina and it goes south, they 
bear no cost burden to that. They just pack up and leave. And we're left holding the burden of that by them ruining our water system. Anyway, I'll let my wife speak for. Okay, just quickly, I just want to thank the panel and I just want to ask Cal Am who they think they are. Uh, you're all lawyered up and you, it seems like you feel like you're a bunch of kings poaching on Marina. Didn't Marina let you know we don't want you here? Haven't we made that clear by now? I say, take your money and your lawyers and disappear. I urge the panel, please listen to the citizens and please deny this motion. Thank you very much. We are now gonna to go to Michael Bear. Go ahead, you have two minutes. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes. Whereas the county of Monterey has been divided across a cypress curtain or a lettuce curtain, depending on what side of that divide you live in during the last 50 years and more. And whereas water is fundamental to life and a required resource necessary to such major activities as agriculture, hoteliers, and real estate sales. And whereas the Calam ratepayer who will bear the punishing economic brunt of these decisions also requires water to brush their teeth, cook their food, wash their hands, their bodies, and their clothes, and most importantly, quench their very thirst. And whereas the spirit of CEQA guidelines was violated at your last meeting when certain members of this board chose to ignore those guidelines and make a political move to ream Peninsula residents. And whereas the disrepresentation on the Monterey One board had over 28% of the total weighted vote designated to Salinas, even though Salinas won't pay a single construction penny for the billion dollar desal plant. And whereas the teeny tiny town of Sand City, which has a single vote to represent little more than 400 constituent ratepayers, while the six votes that make up the representation of Seaside and Monterey is for over 60,000 combined ratepayers. And whereas the needs at Seaside, Sand City residents are getting 25 times the representation of Monterey and Seaside residents combined on this board, even though they already have their own poorly performing desal plant. And whereas Mr. Gagliotti also enjoys saying whereas, and whereas he represents the fifth smallest peninsula city, Delray Oaks, with a single vote on this board. And whereas the communities of Carmel, Carmel Valley, and Pebble Beach have several thousand ratepayers with zero representation on this board. And whereas the city of Marina, in conjunction with the Marina Coast Water District, by virtue of its natural growth and its annexation of the Fort Ord communities, has now qualified for an additional weighted vote per your own GPA guidance, but goes unrecognized. And whereas John Phillips cannot be bothered to pretend that he serves the wider community interest to provide affordable water as a human right to all residents of this beautiful region. And whereas he has abrogated all Please sense of decorum or environmental justice during his service on this board and others, his apology today, notwithstanding. Now, Mr. Baird, we heretofore declared that off, action. Off, please. We are now gonna to go to Tina Walsh. You have two minutes, go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. I'm a ratepayer of the Marina Coast Water District. Please vote no on the resolution before you tonight that aims to stop progress on the expansion of the Pure Water Monterey project. The expansion only adds more of the advanced water purification equipment along with additional pipelines and storage and relocates some well sites. The expansion does not include reliance on any new sources of wastewater that are not already being used in the original Pure Water Monterey project. The FSEIR purposely excluded the wastewater supply sources in question tonight from its evaluations. So concern over these supply sources is not a good reason to avoid certifying the FSEIR. In the chapter three responses to wastewater supply and source water comments, it is demonstrated that Monterey One Water already has obtained the rights to sufficient source waters to allow for the expansion. The expansion of Pure Water Monterey is a good and worthwhile project that furthers the mission of Monterey One Water as a water pollution control agency to capture pollutants from our wastewater before it reaches Monterey Bay. The added bonus of electric of obtaining the electrical power through the regional landfill, thereby reducing carbon emissions, is a welcome step toward combat, combating climate change. Just last year, Pure Water Monterey received praise on state and national levels 
<clears throat> for its collaborative approach by local public agencies working together for the public's best interest. Please vote no on both points of tonight's resolution and affirm that the expansion of the Pure Water Monterey Advanced Purified Water Project is a worthy goal that deserves our continued support. Thank you. We are now going to go to Peter Mountier. Go ahead, Mr. Mountier. You have two minutes. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I'll just make it brief. I'd like to echo um, the uh, comments of Mr. Rick Aldinger earlier and um, also just state that uh, to the point a couple speakers made about that you will never be able to revisit this project again. That's not true. The resolution before you does give you a roadmap uh, to do that in the future when your agency is in a better position to do so. And uh, so I would, I would encourage you to keep that in mind. Uh, when hearing comments like that. I think uh, this board heard from me last week, so uh, I'll wrap up my comments now, but uh, those are my thoughts. Thank you very much. I urge you to pass the resolution. Thank you. We are now gonna go to Norm Groot. Go ahead, Mr. Groot, you have two minutes. Good evening, directors and Chair Stefani. This is Norm Groot, resident of Pacific Grove. I'm not going to take a whole lot of time here because a lot of the arguments that I was going to make have been discussed earlier. So I will support the resolution and the discussion put forward by Rick Aldinger, Jerry Edelin, Fred Muir, and Rick Hoyer. We urge you to pass the resolution this evening. Thank you. Gary Krieger, go ahead. You have two minutes. Go ahead, Mr. Krieger. There we go. Got it. Chairman Board, uh, here we are again for uh, another evening at Kabuki Theater. But first, I want to extend a heartfelt thanks to the Monterey One Water staff for their hard work and diligence. During my 25 years in the Navy, I saw plenty of examples of good leadership as well as bad. The way some board members have publicly denigrated the staff, questioned their competence, their integrity, is the worst kind of leadership. If you have issues with their performance and take Councilman Williamson's advice and do it in closed session, your embarrassing behavior says much more about your qualities than those of your staff. As to the issues at hand, those opposing the measure being proposed tonight only have staff reports from Monterey One Water, Monterey Peninsula Water Management District, backed up by two independent studies. That's all they have for justification. Those in favor have what well, to most reasonable people seem to be Calam talking points. No studies, no expert witnesses, just zero talking points, excuse me, just talking points with zero substantiation that you just keep saying over and over. Bring your witnesses, bring your studies, if they're not there. Yeah, we know what's gonna happen, but in I, Maria Coast, it's third vote. They are legally entitled to, you're gonna pass the resolution. No worries about a backup plan. It's, again, as, as an old Navy guy, I can't even imagine what's going through your heads and you walk away from a, even the idea of having a backup plan. Inconceivable. I have a more time than I thought, so I would just reiterate some what several other people have already said. You think the difficulties being encountered by this new complex desal plant or something, wait until the, the experimental slant wells come in. Let's come back and, do, and see how that works out. Thank you. Uh, Carol? Go ahead, you have two minutes. Carol, please ensure that your microphone is not muted. We're gonna go ahead and skip Carol and we're gonna go to Daniel Larson. Go ahead, Mr. Larson, you have two minutes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Good evening, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm a graduate student at CSU Monterey Bay. I live in Seaside. It is challenging to estimate future water demand. And as we've seen projected demand reports can vary depending on public and private contracting for who produces them. If existing issues were resolved, the PWM expansion would increase existing recycling capacity by 164%. The Salinas Valley's importance, CSIP and seawater intrusion should be considered. Also, there may come a point in the future where we need both the PWM expansion and the desalination plant. 
drought-proof desal does raise important environmental questions and they should be adequately answered before any final construction. I appreciate the work Monterey One Water has put in thus far. I think that the work on the PWM expansion should continue as initially planned. Halting it would be a mistake. This resolution should not be approved. Thank you. We are now going to go to Carol. Carol, you have two minutes. Please make sure your microphone is not muted. Okay, we're going to go to Daniel Fernandez. Go ahead, Mr. Fernandez, you have two minutes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'll be right with you there. My name is Daniel Fernandez, and I'm a professor at Cal State Monterey Bay and a resident of East Campus at CSUMB. I'll cut straight to the point. Uh, first of all, I do want to thank the staff of the Monterey One Water for their tireless work on the development of the Pure Water Monterey project and it, of its proposed expansion. The expansion will cost significantly less than any desal plan and it is far friendlier environmentally and it is one that is demanded by the public. Please vote no on this proposal. And, and this is proposal 2020-09. Thank you very much. We are now gonna go to Marley. Go ahead, Marley, you have two minutes. Uh, this is Marley Meldon, Carmel Valley. Thank you for developing Pure Water Monterey and the excellent SEIR to expand it if needed. It's helpful to read the SEIR and realize letters are answered in groups rather than individually. And you'll see that many people with legal and technical expertise and years of professional experience in water issues have done outstanding work for you. They've documented every finding and assured you that the source water is more than adequate and secure. Section three, Appendix M. The expansion can help CalAM produce sufficient water to lift the CDO when needed. Appendices N, O, and P. Provided you don't delay, I might add. All environmental impacts have been mitigated. The SEIR meets all CEQA standards and requirements. During these past months, we've learned the value of facts from expert, experienced professionals and timely action. We've also learned that alternative facts, delays, and obfuscation by the uninformed special interests and or those who place profit foremost can result in what could have been prevented, business losses, suffering, and thousands of needless deaths. Which do you want? Which do you want for our community? Please choose truth and expertise over obfuscation and vote no on both parts of this resolution and please approve your excellent million dollar SEIR. Thank you. Carol, go ahead, you have two minutes. Carol? And that might have been a mistake um, by Carol, raise your hand. We're gonna go ahead and lower Carol's hand. If you do wanna speak again, Carol, please raise it again. We are now gonna to go to Susan Scavoni. Go ahead, you have two minutes. Ms. Scavoni, go ahead. Okay, thank you. I just needed to find the microphone. <clears throat> thank you for letting me speak. Issues raised to deny the certification have nothing to do with the SEIR. The SEIR is an environmental document. Your own SECA attorney informed you there were no environmental issues with the document. The only plausible reason for this resolution is to somehow convince the Coastal Commission to believe expansion is not feasible. The PWM project is running. The issues it has are common startup hurdles. Expansion would be to an existing infrastructure, expansion of an approved functioning project, not a standalone project, nor was it ever stated to be operating at the same time as the desal. It's a backup plan. And why would the SER be evaluated on its effect on Castorville when it takes no water from Castorville 
the SIP or the Salinas Valley Ground Basin. The technical memo of the SEIR clearly addressed source water. All four scenarios show sufficient water without using ag industrial, ag wash water, or water from Salinas. MCWRA argues over 400 acre feet of water they claim is theirs that's used for backwash. Why can't they negotiate this? Why do they refuse 4,000 acre feet for CSIP that could help the Salinas Valley groundwater basin in Castroville? And please stop dismembering the supply and demand report done by the MPWMD, which has now been verified by two other studies and CalAM is using these numbers in their current rate case. The community strongly supports Monterey One and the necessary ratepayer increases for fiscal stability and the PWM project. Your actions serve to erode that support. Please do not renege on your responsibility. Stop distorting the public process and putting us at risk. Please certify the EIR, the SEIR. And I'd like to thank the staff for their professionalism and their hard work. Thank you. Frederica Jones. Go ahead, Ms. Jones, you have two minutes. Thank you, uh, Monterey One Water Board and staff. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. As a Delray Oaks resident, a couple mistakes. we have found again that John Gagliotti has put his forth a resolution of his own truth. He, in conjunction with John Phillips, are intentionally and unwillingly to unwillingly to review and accept facts and reports that would benefit any other water projects other than CalAM. It's obvious their votes are only for their own future personal gain and self-interest with CalAM and future development on the peninsula. Clearly they are not for the good of the vast number of residents of the peninsula who voted to rid of CalAM diesel project. We're asking that you please vote no on the resolution. Thank you for your time. Uh, Ms. Folsom, go ahead, you have two minutes. Hi, uh, good evening board members once again. Um, I hail you from Carmel Valley Village. Um, I really appreciate other speakers who have pointed out the obvious, which is, you know, Carmel Valley, uh, we don't have a voice on the board. Uh, we really don't. And, um, you know, that was all good and fine when, you know, we have septic and so on, wastewater and so on. But now we have an opportunity to benefit from a recycled water project. And yet we have no voice on the board. And so really what we're seeing here is we're seeing the majority being stifled by a heavily Calam influenced minority. Um, it's wrong, it's, it's ethically and morally bankrupt. I'm very upset about it. And I'm very upset that uh, the, this minority on the board uh, who will not end up paying at all uh, for any of the incredibly expensive water projects that are going on right now um, through uh, uh, you know, Cal Am's desal. Um, you know, so ridiculous to me that the, uh, you know, the same old uh, tax responsibility coalition or whatever the hell they call themselves uh, uh, keep saying that, you know, they, it would be irresponsible for us to move forward on, on, uh, on the Pure Water Monterey expansion. Boy, wait till they see the bills from the desal project. Wait till they see what happens when we haven't created a system that will support actual water challenges. Uh, and that, that's the end of my comment. Thank you. Thank you. We are now going to go to PG Barr. You have two minutes. Go ahead. This is Barbara Moore. I'm a homeowner in Monterey. Um, I sat through the meeting to the SEIR a couple of weeks ago and uh, was very disappointed to see the board not approve that 
because I didn't think, think there were any substantive reasons not to do so. It's even more distressing now to see that the board is considering adopting this resolution where you would abandon the expansion plan. And I urge the board not to do that. I think it's commendable that you have already implemented phase one uh, of the Pure Water Monterey. Reclaiming and reusing wastewater is consistent with state water policy. And even though the project is experiencing some delays, I think that's normal in something like this. I don't think it's a reason not to go forward with the expansion, which has been previously approved by this board. I think we need to go ahead with the expansion to provide a source of safe, affordable water that is reasonably priced. And I stress reasonably priced. We all know that we pay the highest water rates in the country. And to abandon the expansion is really inexcusable, I think. The SEIR is not inadequate. There is a secure source of water. The CPUC data that projected supply and demand has already been shown to be out of date and inaccurate. There are at least four studies showing that the Pure Water Monterey project and the expansion would be sufficient to provide us ample source of water and reasonable growth for at least 30 years. I urge you to vote against the resolution and I wanna echo the comments of people who have complimented the staff. I was incredibly impressed at the meeting on the SEIR, at the work the staff had done. I think they did a great job of avoiding politics and trying to present a fair and balanced report. Thank you for your consideration. Mike Kennedy and Cindy Perry, go ahead, you have two minutes. Please ensure that your microphone is not on mute. Sure, first a huge shout out to the entire staff at Monterey One Water for their tireless efforts to bring Pure Water Monterey front and center as a big win-win for our community of Monterey Bay. Expansion of the Pure Water Recycling Project is a win-win because there will be no intrusion and no permanent damage of Marina's sole source of water. And expansion of Pure Water Recycling will be three times less expensive than the harmful and illegal calamity slant wells. The community efforts of Pure Water Monterey are supported by the Monterey Bay community. Thank you. We are now gonna to go to David Canwright. Go ahead, you have two minutes. Mr. Canwright, please ensure that your microphone is not on mute. We are gonna to go to Jan Schreiner. Go ahead, Ms. Schreiner, you have two minutes. Hi, good evening. I am the Vice President of the Board for the Arena Coast Water District. And tonight I would just like to support about 20 different speakers who spoke before me. And I thought about listing all their names, but I thought it might use up my two minutes. So let me just say, there are a lot of really good points tonight. I do appreciate what the staff has done and I really like that everybody is recognizing their hard work and integrity. And I, um, I want to say it's amazing to me that we have these public agencies that are creating these water projects and they're having more success than Calam. I would really like to urge that the Ord community be given their third vote, uh, Marina Coast Water District, you know, annexed. And so it would be really great if we could recognize that the population we serve is large enough to be recognized for a third vote. Also, in the past few years, uh, I've been hearing this confusion about water source. The Monterey Peninsula Water Supply Project has no rights to take any water from the aquifers that it is designed to pump from. The aquifers are in an overdrafted basin. There is a production reliability confusion. The current Calam Sand City Diesel project has dwindled to 63% production. Calam pays $800,000 a year to Sand City for an equivalent of about $4,000 per acre for, per year over the cost of operations. This project is only nine years old. The last four years have each averaged 188 acre feet per year from a project designed 
to provide 300 acre feet per year. So this is not a reliable production. The State Water Resources Control Board declared a change in water policy to maximize recycled water. Please deny this resolution and provide that third before the vote. We are now gonna go back to David Canwright. Go ahead, Mr. Canwright, you have two minutes. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. I just wanted to say, uh, I'm David Canwright. I've lived in Delray Oaks for 30 years. I strongly support the expansion of Pure Water Monterey. They have been completely successful in showing that recycling water is safe and economical and environmentally sound. To shut down this expansion makes no sense. The only beneficiaries of such a shutdown would be Cal Am, who already is abusing our community with the highest water prices in the country. And the desal project is hugely expensive, will not help us for years, will have significant environmental effects from the saline discharge, and will drive the water prices up even further. Please reject the resolution tonight. Thank you. We are now going to go to last name Dirksen. Go ahead, you have two minutes. Christina Dirksen. Christina Dirksen. Go ahead. Thank Hello, chairs, Stephanie, and board. My name is Christina Medina Dirksen. I'm a 20 year resident of Marina. My firefighter husband and I are growing our family here in town. You've heard my Marina neighbors and concerned citizens share with you and urge you to consider your actions. Some of you supporting stopping the expansion of the Monterey One water, um, which by the way, my kids have gone on tours and my husband has gone on a tour there and very familiar with it. I just ask you to please think about why you're sitting on this board. Are you representing your constituents or a special interest? You've heard quite a bit from many people and, and the, the reasons why we believe that Cal-Am is, is pushing its way through town. But I want you to think back Think about why you wanted to serve your community. We're lucky to have you, but I urge you to please listen to what your residents are saying. Um, water is the issue in every ag community. I used to live in the Central Valley, attended Fresno State, went to high school in Bis Visalia. And we know that access to water is important. It's the lifeline of agriculture. Expanding the recycling provides a chance to provide water at a cheaper cost for everyone. And that makes sense. Let's give it a try. I just implore you, please, let's stop this political divisiveness that's impacting us all. Even my children who spoke before the California Com Coastal Commission won't let me put away the, the paddles that they held up talking about the snowy plover and the environmental concerns they have. Just do the right thing. Marina's got nothing, gets nothing out of this. Um, my family's here listening to this meeting. We should be out for a walk. Instead, we're asking you to please listen to what we're saying, which by the way, looking like a vote of at least um, 24 speakers to seven. Uh, so please do not support this resolution before you. And lastly, just thank you very much to the hardworking staff, good people working there thank who have provided excellent information. Thank you. We are now gonna go to Amy Anderson. Go ahead, Ms. Anderson, you have two minutes. Ms. Anderson, please, please ensure that your microphone is not on mute. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, uh, my name's Amy Anderson, I'm from Carmel, and I want to thank uh, the chair and the board for this opportunity to speak. The expansion project would help increase the recycling of single-use water rather than dumping it in the ocean. This is a mandate of the state of California a very important thing that many uh, communities are looking for, water that they can recycle. And we have this award-winning, fantastic plant in Monterey One Water. A press release from the City of Marina today reported that the Management District's Supply and Demand Report, which has been under a lot of scrutiny uh, in the past six months, received a positive new review by expert analyst, Dr. Lon House of Energy and Water Consulting. The conclusion of this report was the same as the management districts. 
the expansion of PWM project would meet the area water demands through 2050. This report is a big deal because people were doubting it. Um, and all it, had, all it took was a good real study and a scientist to actually look at the data to show that it was true. Let's just review the basic facts, many of which have disappeared uh, this evening. Monterey One Water's own CEQA attorney told the board there were no deficiencies in the SEIR. Source water is secure and sufficient. The expansion water take, the expansion takes no water from Castroville, CSIP, or the Salinas Valley groundwater basin. It will be produced at one third or less the cost of desal water and it's environmentally much superior to the desal process, which would produce a huge burden of global warming gases. I want to thank the staff of Monterey One Water for the incredible work they've done. Thank you. We are now gonna to go to Patty McCracken. Go ahead, you have two minutes. Thank you for letting me speak. Uh, this is Patty McCracken, I'm from Monterey and I'm a member of the Monterey Peninsula Water Management District's uh, uh, Citizens uh, Oversight Committee for Ordinance uh, 152. And I've lived on the peninsula for uh, since 1981. And like some of the previous commenters, I'm appalled with our local water antics and skyrocketing costs over the years. Uh, as you know, the supplemental EIR was funded with a million dollars of public funds uh, from Monterey One Water and the uh, uh, Water Management District and $350,000 from CalAm ratepayer monies. Um, so that's a total of uh, $1.35 million. After an extended review period that went through to the end of January, the consultants and the Monterey uh, One Water staff responded to all the comments received in great detail and delivered a final SER for review. And yet, the same argu argument, comments, resistance to the environmental conditions are being repeated again and again, as though these points are not being addressed in the final SER and pointed out um, as being not within the scope of the SEIR, which they had. So um, all manner of gamemanship is being demonstrated here, I think. And we are talking a possible political decision, which is labeled as a resolution to put a roadblock in front of the PWM expansion using the mechanism of not certifying the supplemental EIR, which on its environmental um, qualities, it deserves to be um, certified. So as a, a CalAm rate pay payer and as a citizen, uh, I support this most environmentally and financial sound path to more water for the peninsula. And I urge you to reconsider your approach and certify the final SEIR for the Pier Monterey water Monterey expansion. Thank you so much. And now the chair, it is yeah. after 730. There I'm are gonna... about 25 people that still want to speak. Do we want to switch over to one minute? Yes, please. Okay. We are going to go now to Richard. To the, to the chair. Yes, I'd, like to, I'd like to raise an objection. Um, a lot of these folks have been waiting to speak and to arbitrarily cut them off, even though there was a time stated and have their time seems eminently unfair. Many of these speakers haven't used their full two minutes anyway. Um, so I would certainly urge the board to continue at two minutes. Thank you. Uh, we we second that point. We set the we set the agenda at seven thirty. We would go to one minute because of uh, the publicity that we got, and um, you know I think we should stick with it and move to one minute. I mean I think they can get their point across in one minute. Well, uh, again, we're here to listen to the public, so I think we should give them a fair and equal amount of time. I think at the very least, is there a way that we can identify the folks that had um, tuned in uh, to share public comments before 7.30 so that they can be purviewed to that rule? Sure. Also too, I mean, that I, I think we were pretty clear and straight up front. Um, and, and I believe that we should stick with uh, the rules that we've said, that you've actually set down and and continue to do the the board's business 
Chai, do you have an answer there? So there is a question through the chat. I think some people joined after the announcement was made. Um, we have a person asking if we could just clarify the policy for shifting from two minutes to one minute. They thought you said it was for people who joined after 7.30, mm -hmm. not for people who have been waiting one and a half hours to speak. How was the order spoke up, order of uh, speaking chosen? The way we do it through Zoom is as hands are raised, it puts them in order of the way they raise them. And I'm just going down the line. Mm -hmm. So I can't tell who joined after 7.30 or before. Right. OK, I mean, I, I'm, I would like to go with one minute. We're going to go now to Richard Fedick. You have okay, one thank minute. Go ahead. Hi, this is Rick Fedick. Hi, all. Hi, Ron. Um, thank you for, for hosting this meeting and, and to discuss this resolution. Thank you for taking public comments. Uh, it's clearly not an SEIR resolution. It's, it's, it's nonsense, bogus arguments from, from a, an ardent supporter of CalAM. I want to discuss quickly the Moss Landing desal plan that's in process. It's going to happen. It, it, the, the amount of water that's going to be possible to be shipped out probably through Marina Coast to the peninsula um, is going to be 10 or 20,000 acre feet as soon as the Monterey Peninsula Water Management District decides to do a contract. You know, this, that plant is going to get built. It's getting built. Uh, it's going to provide water to Castroville and a bunch of other places, but it might be a higher price than the people of Castroville are happy paying. That's going to be the issue. How do how do we get uh, money to the people of Castroville to pay for water? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Beverly, go ahead. You have one minute. You hear me? Yes. My name is Beverly Bean, and I sit on the advisory committee of the Salinas Valley Basin Groundwater Sustainability Agency. I speak today as an individual and against Mr. Gagliotti's resolution. While he is entitled to his per political opinions, Mr. Gagliotti is not entitled to his own facts. This resolution is full of false statements, as has been shown. Seawater intrusion is expanding, and the county is dealing with a proposed moratorium. At the same time, the members of this board are trying to defeat the only concrete proposal that the GSA plan has to address seawater intrusion. That proposal, Pure Water Monterey and its expansion will provide more water to the Castroville seawater intrusion process project. The plan says that the agency will work closely with Monterey One Water to supplement, support and implement this proposal. Vote no on this resolution. Thank you. We are now gonna to go to Anna Thompson. Go ahead, Ms. Thompson, you have one minute. Hello, uh, there is two people in our house, my household, they want to speak. Could we both get in one minute before yes. you start counting? Yes, go ahead. Okay, you already mm -hmm. reduced my time to half a minute. Go ahead, Ms. Thompson. Okay, thank you. Okay, good evening, Chair Stephanie and Board of Directors. My name is Anna Thompson, I live in Carmel. I strongly urge this board to vote no on the resolution not to certify the Pure Water Monterey Expansion SCR. This resolution is based on misinformation, opinions, and personal biases, not, not on facts. You already have uh, um, um, implemented the Pure Water Monterey project, successfully implemented. Thank you so very much for your uh, excellent job. You also have to know that the last in the last several years to address water shortages and to create a continuous supply of new water, all of Southern California has been developing and implementing large water recycle projects. In fact, the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California has become the largest distributor of purified wastewater in the United States. Its mission statement says, it uses the region's largest untapped source of treated wastewater, otherwise sent to the ocean. Produce a drought-proof source of water, readily available rain or shine. Replenishes groundwater basins. Help meet needs of regions, growing econ economy and population at a cost comparable to other local water resources. 
Um, you have a you speaker? Your original water reliability through diversifying sources. It's unfair. Ms. Thompson, you we can have the next person state okay. the name for the record, please. Okay. Say your name. <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, yes, this is Wayne Thompson. I wanted to touch on this one point. I was going to touch on two points, but it's just one point now. And that has to do with uh, references to problems associated with the existing uh, pure, mono, <coughs> pure water Monterey plant. And as having been an engineer with a large engineering and construction firm for over 40 years, I can tell you that every plant of that type, every large plant has numerous problems and they do get resolved. But sometimes, and even in my experience, months. The good side is that once they are resolved, those lessons learned can be put to use in the expansion plan and considerably reduce the time and expense that would be required to implement that plan. I don't think the same can be said for the proposed desal plan. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We are now going to go to Lisa Troyer. Go ahead. You have one minute. OK, um, this is Lisa Mole Troyer. I am a homeowner in Monterey. And I apologize in advance for any noise. I'm here with my daughters to weigh in on this important issue. I've lived in Monterey since 2004. Um, the Pure Water Monterey expansion seems to be able to meet the water needs of the peninsula Maybe. with an I'm environmentally positive option while keeping desal open as a potential backup plan. Meanwhile, every time local voters have had a chance to weigh in on water for the future, my mailbox has been flooded with multiple expensive glossy brochures sent by Cal-Am, which were paid for through our water bills. This is clearly worth a lot of money to Cal-Am. Our water supply and our environment are too important to be decided by profit. I'm in favor of the Pure Water Monterey expansion. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. We are now gonna go to Mary Solsing. Go ahead, you have one minute. Hi, my Ms. name is Mary Solfing. I'm a resident of Delray Oaks. And frankly, I'm embarrassed that John Gaglione represents Delray Oaks on this board. He certainly doesn't represent my interests or opinions. I urge you to reject the resolution before you tonight. If you choose instead to adopt the resolution, there will be no backup plan. And it will add one more chain to our bondage to Cal-Am. Cal-Am who has and will continue to ignore the needs of the public they should be serving, focusing instead on their own profits and special interests. Don't let Gaglione and his cohorts have their way. Reject this resolution, please. Thank you. We are now going to go to phone number ending in 5477. If you can please state your name for the oh, record. You have one minute, go ahead. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes, this is Larry Wan representing Western Lines for Nature. I'm asking you to vote to deny the resolution to kill the expansion. Recycle water is the way to go for the future. These cells shall only be the last resort for the many negative impacts it has, including energy usage. In this case, the Calam diesel project will be a disaster for the environment. It destroys seven acres of critical and sensitive coastal dune habitat and has the easement to destroy up to 40 acres. Impact, it impacts 32 endangered, listed, or special status species. In addition to the sand dune and other habitat impacts along the project route, it now turns out that the project will also impact wetlands and vernal pools. We support forcing Cal-Am to get off the Carmel River which they have been doing illegally, but we do not approve of attempting to sacrifice one environmental disaster for another, particularly when there is a way to prevent both. However, your short-sighted attempt to destroy that for whatever political reasons you may have could result in the destruction of both. You do not care about what I okay. applaud those of you who maintain your personal integrity we are now going to go to Melody Chrislock. Go ahead, Ms. Chrislock, you have one minute. This resolution has hardly one true fact in it. I propose a new Gagliotti resolution. Here's how it could read. Whereas 
This has gotten out of control. People aren't blind. They see that the expansion provides plenty of water and they don't need Canada's desal. Whereas we must convince the Coastal Commission that the expansion is not feasible and the whole Pure Water Monterey project is in big, big trouble. Whereas we need that 700 acre feet of desal water for Cashville that Callan promised us. Whereas the rich folks on the peninsula can afford 1.2 billion for a desal plant they don't need to solve Castorville's seawater intrusion problem. Whereas we need to put our foot down. Ag is entitled to all the wastewater. The peninsula can't have one drop of their wastewater ever. Whereas we know what's best, we need to kill the expansion and maybe even the whole Pure Water Monterey project so that Calam's desal is the only game in town. Thank you. We are now gonna to go to phone number ending in 2656. Go ahead, you have one minute. If you can state your name for the record, please. Ruth Stone and Lusine, Special Counsel for Marina Coast Water District. The text of the proposed resolution materially misrepresents this board's prior actions, so it must be rejected tonight. It attributes to you findings and conclusions that were not made because both motions failed last month. The bulk of the text on page two of the proposed resolution is completely false, starting with the word concluding at the top of the page through the next to the last paragraph. Expansion or not, you should reject the resolution. The PUC asked whether Pure Water Monterey could be expanded. Your staff analyzed three scenarios. The PUC did two things with that information. It said expansion wasn't far enough along at the time. It also told CalAM it should consider expansion in the future if plans were more fully developed and there were delays with desalination. I am sure that if CalAM took to the PUC a proposal to purchase water from expansion, the PUC would approve it if it found the proposal was in the public interest. But the PUC doesn't consider applications it hasn't received. Thank you. We are now going to Thomas Ward. Go ahead, Mr. Ward, you have one minute. Yes, hello, I'm Tom Ward. I'm a resident, full-time resident of Pebble Beach. Uh, there are now two intractable sides of the desal plant. Persuasive arguments, um, the facts and figures have been presented over and over again with no movement from either side. The Monterey One Water Board voted for a backup plan, which to me seems like a reasonable compromise for these intractable groups. Let's proceed with approval of the SEIR as a potential backup to a desal plant that still has hurdles to jump over and may never be built. Thank you. We are now going to go to Lisa Berkeley, PhD. You have one minute. Go ahead. I'm here as the board chair for Women in International Security West Coast Chapter. There's some decisions we make. She's got some technical difficulty. Miss Berkeley, we're going to go ahead and come back to you. We are going to go to Kimberly Shirley. Go ahead, Miss Shirley, you have one minute. Hi, everybody. First, I would just want to thank um, the M1 staff, General Manager Paul Schuto, and your employees for your dedication to the mission of M1 Water and your work that you've put into the Recycled Water Project and the SEIR expansion project. Uh, you should all be commended. And I want to thank you. I um, want you to know that many residents are really deep, deeply grateful for your work. So thank you. Um, I am a Delray Oaks resident, and I am very disappointed in our city leadership and lack of representation for Mr. Gagliotti. Many residents have spoken out and do not want this resolution. It seems that those who want to extinguish this project are bringing up arguments that are either not valid, as shown by the third party peer reviewed studies that have been done, or are refusing to acknowledge the SEIR for what it is. It's just a document that looks at environmental impacts. Really, the bottom line here is that the CEQA experts have shown that this document is adequate. Because of those basic facts, you should not pass this resolution. Keep the expansion project on the table. 
stop injecting politics into this decision. It's clearly shown by the third party vote that you're denying for Marina Coast that you're playing politics. You need to work together to find a solution that works for everyone. Vote no on this resolution. Thank you. Anthony Lombardo, go ahead, you have one minute. Thank you. Uh, EIR, like it or not, is legally inadequate. The project description is not stable. Is it a backup that's being analyzed, which is what you voted for, or is it a replacement, which is what you not did not vote for? If it's a backup, you fail to analyze the cumulative impacts because both projects will be built. If it's a replacement, you doesn't analyze the lack of seaside groundwater basin replacement. It doesn't analyze the inconsistencies with the Supreme Court decision. It doesn't analyze Pure Water Monterey's problems and what would be needed to fix those problems so that you could provide water through an expansion. It doesn't analyze the lack of guaranteed supply and also doesn't analyze supply to Castroville. Whether no matter what it is, it fails to analyze the 750 acre feet being taken away from CSIP and the impacts on the sanctuary. There are many issues and problems facing your agency, including the problems with Pure Water Monterey that you have to deliver water from now. Do you really want to take on the liability and responsibility of being the sole source supplier for the peninsula? Because that's what will happen in the PUC if the California Coastal Commission, if you proceed further. Thank you. Thank you. We are now going to go to Joe Desmond. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Great. Thank you for taking the time, board members and members of the public. My name is Joe Desmond. I'm the Executive Director of Sustainable Agriculture and Energy. I won't take much of your time given the arguments that have already been made, including uh, Fred Munier and Norm Groot. Uh, given that they've already kind of spelled out what I was hoping to say. I'd like to urge the board to approve this resolution and move forward with the original proposed solution to the Monterey Peninsula's water issues with a stool solution and furthering the overall recycled water desalination and basin uh, injection and recovery uh, solution. Thank you for your time. I, and I ask that you consider the future of the Monterey Peninsula. Thank you. We are now going to go to Kevin Raskoff. Go ahead, Mr. Raskoff. You have one minute. Mr. Raskoff, please ensure that your microphone is not muted. We are now gonna to go to Tammy Jennings. You have one minute, go ahead. Ms. Jennings. We are gonna to go to Brian McCarthy. Mr. McCarthy, go ahead, you have one minute. Thank you, board. It's important. Mr. McCarthy? Mr. McCarthy? Yes. I'm sorry, you have one minute. Can you start your comments over? Thank you, board. It's unfortunate the board is taking the step to limit public comment to an almost inconsequential amount. And I'd suggest for consideration that doing so is inappropriate and unreasonable. You are charged with, at best, putting reasonable restrictions on public comment. Remember, you chose to sit on this dais and were elected by all of the people on all sides of issues to listen to public comment, even if it means going late into the night. That aside, I ask that you deny the proposed motion that SEIR is not full of the faults that opponents of the recycled water project claim. What is clear is that most people want novel sources of water to ensure the Central Coast's ongoing success. And yes, in fact, that may one day include an environmentally sound desal project once the technology is available to provide clean, fresh drinking water at a reasonable cost. And this is not the current proposed desal project, which steals from an overdrafted basin from which there are no rights to take which is why recycled water expansion is so important. Either way, you will need multiple sources of water in your portfolio. The Pure Water Monterey expansion is like recycled projects throughout the country and is an environmentally sound superior choice to add to your water portfolio. Please deny the motion. We are now gonna to go to Ms. Folsom, who's, uh, her father is gonna speak. If you can state your name for the record, please, you have one minute. 
Yes, uh, my name is Sean Folsom. I've been a resident of Carmel Valley since September 1956. I've seen Calam steal water from Rosie's Bridge, a special well, and they had trucks, water trucks that would come in. They even had a camouflage around the, the uh, site so that some somehow people here wouldn't notice them stealing water from the Carmel River Basin. I don't trust Cal Am to carry, well, you know what, in a rubber boot. But here's the deal. The desal project has a massive annual fixed cost of over an estimated 30 million per year, whether it's operating or not. If this water goes online, the cost of expansion to run up to $6,000 per versus $2,000 per acre foot from Pure Water Monterey. Uh, it, if it is idle for any reason. Awesome. You, know, you could wrap up your comments. Oh yeah, vote no. Thank you. <laughs> we are gonna go to Kathy Biala. Go ahead, Miss, oh, sorry. Sure, we're gonna go to George. Go ahead, George, you have one minute. We're gonna go to Kathy Biala. You have one minute, go ahead. Good evening. Marina and Citizens for Just Water are aware of the recent moves by this board to not only fail to certify this SEIR, but to deny Marina Coast Water District the three-weighted vote it deserves according to the Joint Powers Agreement. We ask that you officially recognize and allow MCWD its three-weighted votes before any further resolution is considered in relation to the expansion project. Do not approve this resolution. We ask that you retain the focus on future certification of the expansion project, SEIR, as a viable backup plan to the slant well desalination project. Should CalAM fail to get the coastal development permit approval in August and or fail to get water rights it requires, you need a plan B. We humbly thank Monterey One Water staff for the years of excellent work and dedication to this state of the state-of-the-art recycled project. Thank you so much. We are now going to go to George. George, you have one minute. Go ahead. George, please ensure that your microphone is not muted. Unmuted now? No, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, this is George Riley. I'm a member of the Water Management District. I'm speaking on my own uh, as an individual. Um, I think your resolution raises some serious problems about the future in terms of your own ability to negotiate and discuss issues with other agencies. Um, I think you've uh, point two and point three has set up conditions that there's no indication at all when they might ever be met. So you're in effect uh putting a gag order on your board your entire board committees and everybody to refuse any further discussion of this project there are partners in this project partners that have vested interest i hope you will consider first of all disapproving the project the the, uh, the resolution fundamentally but if it has to be amended please leave some room for some future discussions we're all in this boat together we all have opinions. We all have places we can bring to the table. We all have options we can pursue. We all have resources. And to cut off all of that kind of discussion is just blinding your binding your whole board. I think it's a bad move. We are going to go to Lisa Berkeley. She tried to come on earlier. Miss Berkeley. Hi, can you hear Hi, me? Can you, yes, can you, go ahead. You have one minute. Okay. My name is Dr. Lisa Berkeley, and I'm here as the board chair for Women in International Security, West Coast Chapter, speaking through the lens of peace and human security. There's some decisions that we make that we can never reverse. Harming one another is often one of these decisions. We harm one another out of fear, a desire for power, to be right, or because we think our survival for the future is dependent upon such an action. Interestingly, indigenous communities suggest that we are served today by planning for and thinking about the next seven generations. 
They teach us we are all connected to one another and to the earth. Therefore, inflicting harm on one another or on the earth is harming ourselves. Science and the SEIR show us that the D-Cell project will inflict harm, irreversible harm to people and to our home, Mother Earth. The Monterey One expansion, on the other hand, does the opposite. It will buy us time, likely 30 years, to come up with a regional long-term solution. Please care for all of us and the Earth. Think of your children and the next seven generations. Please deny this resolution and certify the SEIR. Thank you to the staff and to the board for your time and hard work. We are now gonna go back to Kevin Raskoff. He got cut off last time. Are you there, Mr. Raskoff? Mr. Raskoff, go ahead, Hello, you have can, one minute. Okay, can you hear me? I'm sorry about the technical problems. Um, all right, my name is Kevin Raskoff. I'm a resident of Delray Oaks. Uh, you hired experts to assess the SEIR on its own merits and half the board didn't like the answer that came back because they see it as an impediment to the future prospects of a desalination plant. The issue is this SEIR is not about desalination, but half the board is turning it into just that, endangering the public's money that has already been spent. This is between those that do not, that will do anything required to maximize the possibility for development and on the other side, those not willing to sell out the environment and the pocketbooks of their residents. What your job is on this board, I believe, is to support development of new water sources, not new development. You don't work for Calam, you don't work for developers, you don't work for realtors, you work for the citizens, and you're letting the lure of future growth and profits cloud your evaluation on this issue. Please fight to be on the right side of this issue, be brave, and do not pass this resolution. We are now going to go to um, Samsung T377A. Go ahead, you have one minute. Hello, please make sure that your microphone is not on mute. We're gonna go ahead and go down to Keith Vandermotten. Go ahead, you have one minute. Thank you, my name's Keith Vandermotten. I'm the general manager for the Marina Coast Water District. The top of Monterey and Water's webpage it states providing cooperative water solutions. With Pure Water Monterey expansion, we are presented with a solution for more water. We should be standing together to cooperatively find solutions instead of letting Calam divide us. That includes both moving ahead on the expansion project and in fixing the many serious issues with the desal plan. Those today that stand in the way of the expansion project are the very same that are absolutely unyielding in finding cooperative solutions to the serious issues with the desal plan. There is sufficient source water for the expansion and no reason to not move ahead. I urge you tonight to allow the expansion project to move forward and we're able work to find solutions to the many serious issues with the desal project for its issues are resolvable if we work cooperatively. A vote tonight to not move forward on the expansion does not fix desal. It simply destroys the opportunity for providing cooperative water solutions. Thank you. Giants, Giants, eight o'clock. Do, do you know how many are left speakers? It looks like we have 920 of us by showing raise of hands, either on the Zoom feature or by pressing star nine. Are there any others that want to speak? It, it looks like it's about 24 people still wanting to speak. Okay, let's go. We'll finish him up. The next person is a Samsung phone number, uh, T377A. You have one minute. Go ahead. Can you hear? Yes. Oh, okay. This is a new laptop. This is Eric Tynan. I'm the GM for the Castro Community Services District. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody up there of the diocese working hard for the constituents. It's unfortunate some people, when they get desperate, start bad mouthing, incurring Cal and this, and on the payroll that developers, it's bungus. Everybody up there is doing the best they can for their constituency. Um, the peninsula has been trying to find a water source for going on 30 years. There's always another one coming up. They're based on pure water expansion on a on the initial pure water that hasn't even put any water into the pipe yet. I mean, into the distribution system. Um, it just gets kind of old. You guys need to really fix the problem. It was a three-legged stool, get it on, and uh, just try to show a little more respect for the people who are working hard for you. Nobody's getting paid for this. And uh, by the way, Marina and Castro has the same water supply. 
and it's getting to be the deep aquifer and that's water mining. So the problem is going to be where we get our water from, not where the peninsula is. By the way, Carmel, Carmel Valley, none of them get water from Monterey One Water. So, okay, thank you. By it. Thank you. We are now going into Margaret Davis. Go ahead, Miss Davis. You have one minute. Good evening. Please do not kill recycled water expansion and force desal on rate payers. Expansion will cost a billion dollars less than Calam's desal plant. Go online faster, present fewer legal risks, protect coastal resources, and provide far more affordable water for low-income renters and other disadvantaged residents. It makes no sense to close out this option now for the benefit of Calam and its shareholders. Please reject this resolution. Thank you. We are now going to Marlene. Go ahead, you have one minute. Hello, this is Marlene Fisher speaking. Um, this resolution should be defeated. This board should not be reneging on the constructive agreement they made with Monterey Peninsula Water Management District last year. The false objections to the SER that I have heard so far actually smack of private interests in North County and Salinas Valley who benefit from Cal-Am activities. Whereas this SERR points out several actual benefits to the environment with the recycling of water, such as low carbon footprint, avoiding discharge of concentrated saline into the Bay Sanctuary waters, and it cleans and purifies contaminated water. What's not to like? It makes you wonder why the so-called Taxpayers Association doesn't love it, doesn't it? Please vote no against this resolution and stay with it. Thank you. Thank you. Alice Green, go ahead, you have one minute. Ms. Green? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm here. The, thank you. The conservation of precious limited resources is essential for the common good. The recycling of water is a clear contributor to conservation, especially in a naturally dry area such as our own. The issue is not whether recycling water is sufficient to sustain this area's water needs. The issue is that recycling whatever water is available is an obvious conservation tactic. To forbid outright further staff investigation into the expansion of the recycling project is unbelievably short-sighted and absurd. Thank you. You were muted, muted Chai. Paola, go ahead, you have one minute. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Paola Batra. I live in Carmel Valley, and I just would like to back up uh, what everybody else has been saying uh, in support of no on the resolution and yes to recycled water. Uh, we're here in 2020, and why we don't think that uh, recycled water is a good way to go, uh, I don't understand. So, thank you. Thank you. We are now going to Paul Bruno. Go ahead, Mr. Bruno, you have one minute. Thank you, I'm Paul Bruno, a resident of Monterey. I'm the chair of the Seaside Basin uh, Groundwater uh, Water Master. Also, I serve on the Monterey Peninsula Water Management District's Ordinance 152 Oversight Committee. Tonight, I'm speaking as an individual. I urge you to support the resolution. I wish to echo the comments made by Rick Ollinger, uh, Rick Hoyer, Tom Rowley, Peter Montier, Fred Mirror, and Norm Groot, and their organizations. Uh, it's important to note that the no side has organized a filibuster to delay, to delay tonight's vote. And for that reason, the limiting of public comment to one minute was justified and reasonable. So thank you, Chair, for doing that. Thank you for moving forward tonight with this vote. Please vote yes on the resolution. Thank you. We are now going to go to Julie Hoffman. Go ahead, Ms. Hoffman. You have one minute. Calam's project, oh, this is Julie Hoffman, Marina resident. Calam's project is in stall with the Coastal Commission. It is time for Plan B 
please vote no on this special interest driven resolution for the board to wash their hands of a vetted water supply solution is indefensible to the peninsula they represent. Thank you and listen to your staff. They did good work. We are now going to go to Pat. I don't know if you've already spoken. Is there somebody else in your household that wants to speak? Pat? No, no that it's me, different Pat. Okay, go ahead. Uh, my name is Pat McNeil. I'm a Monterey resident. Uh, the facts have been stated pretty clearly. I think uh, the way forward is pretty pretty clear. Monterey is suffering under a long-term moratorium on water hookups and, and, and is very frustrated in meeting its goals for housing. Well-meaning people have invested uh, on the promise of in, in imminent water supply, and this is a public project. Please keep faith with the public. Please vote against the resolution. Thank you. We are now going to Forrest Melton. Go ahead, you have one minute. Hello, thank you for the opportunity to comment. I'm a resident of Monterey, a 38 year resident of the peninsula and I work on solutions to local and national water issues professionally. I'd like to compliment the M1 Water staff on their excellent work to date on the SEIR and planning for the Pure Water Monterey expansion project. As we move forward in addressing our water challenges as a community, it is essential that we have multiple credible, cost-effective, environmentally sound alternatives to address these challenges. I ask you to vote no on the two resolutions before the board tonight and to allow planning for the Pure Water Monterey expansion project to continue. Thank you. Kristen Mole, go ahead. You have one minute. Hi, my name is Kristen Molay, and I'm a Seaside resident and a commissioner on Seaside's Environmental Commission. And I would urge commissioners to uh, vote no on the resolutions to not consider recycled water. As many other people have said, we need all the water we can get as we look towards the future. And the environmentally sound option uh, the, of recycling water should be kept on the table. Uh, you did peer-reviewed science. It showed that this is a sound option and there's no reason to take it off the table. We need all the water options we can get and I don't even know why you would want to get rid of it. This is a valid backup. Please throw out this resolution and keep recycled water on the table. We are now going to John Swainsane. Sorry about that. Go ahead, you have one minute. Thank you, Chairman and uh, members of the board. My name is John Swainsane. I'm a resident of the unincorporated county. As you can tell, you know, the saying that Mark Twain said, whiskey is worth for drinking and water is worth fighting for, and that's what we're doing is fighting for it. I ask the board to please keep all options open, vote no on the resolution, so you have the option in the future to decide to go with the expansion or not. Thank you very much. We are now gonna to go to Wayne Kelly. Go ahead, you have one minute. Mr. Kelly, please ensure that your microphone is not muted. Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry, my name is Wayne Kelly. I'm a multi-generational resident here on the Monterey Peninsula. And I'm a little upset that this resolution has even been brought forward. And honestly, I, I obviously I'm saying no on this resolution. We need as much water as we can get. Um, Calam has faltered for years, and we have here we have an obvious solution, uh, a, a plan B. And anyone that votes against this, I question their motives. It's just absolutely ridiculous that anyone would be against this, even if they don't haven't brought any water forward. It's a total possibility. So why would you get rid of that? I question the motives and I, I call a vote of no confidence on Mr. Gagliotti. I just don't believe he's in this for water for our citizens, which is the whole goal of this situation in the first place. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Uh, Tammy Jennings, have you spoken already? No, I didn't have my microphone unmuted. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Tammy Jennings, uh, Monterey City resident, Monterey County, all my hot life. 
Um, I want you to vote no on this resolution and please certify the EIR that costs you nothing in time or money. And I don't really want to be negative, but I've been to so many of these water, all kinds of water meetings over the years. I'm getting the feeling that the votes are already in regardless of what anybody says. And I'm hoping that somebody shows the courage to change their vote and to vote no against this resolution because it's unfounded. It just is ridiculous. Thank you, sorry, bye. We are now going to Lisa Ann Sani. Go ahead, you have one minute. If you can ensure that your microphone is not on mute. We are gonna go to- Here we go. Okay, oh, go ahead. Thank you. I'm Liz Antoni, I'm a resident of Monterey County, and I'm speaking personally tonight. I find water very critical to this area, and unfortunately, haven't had the time to research what the board is discussing tonight. I did see a post on Facebook and was grateful to join your meeting um, just in the last hour. I want to thank, thank the staff for having Zoom and ensure it will continue after shelter in place. I think the more people that are involved with our water issues in our area, the better. And I'm concerned that with the one minute limit uh, with such an important item, I encourage the board to reconsider this. And again, I can't make comment on the item tonight because I'm not researched enough, but I do know water is very critical to Monterey County and I encourage everyone to vote in that best interest. Thank you. We are going to Michael DeLapa. Go ahead, Mr. DeLapa, you have one minute. Hi, uh, Michael DeLapa, Executive Director of Land Watch Monterey County, and I'd like to uh, tag team this with my wife for two minutes. Um, I'm here to oppose the resolution. Virtually the same resolution failed at your last meeting. What circumstances have changed? Why would you want to foreclose the best option, indeed the only option, for a safe, adequate, reliable, and affordable and I emphasize affordable, new water supply in the Monterey Peninsula. It would be irresponsible not to take the steps to retain the expansion as a shovel-ready backup plan. We know that the desalination plant will cost a billion dollars more than the expansion project. Why would you want to force Peninsula taxpayers to spend an additional billion dollars when the expansion project can easily meet water needs for the next 30 years or more? Why would you want residents of Del Rey Oak, Sand City, and other peninsula cities to pay three to nine times more for water than they would under the expansion project? Despite, this is Rebecca, despite working on water issues for 25 years, we've never claimed to be water experts. And neither is anyone on this board, but your staff are experts, the Monterey Peninsula Water Management District staff are also experts. Why aren't you listening to them, to the water engineers? to the professionals who know how to perform cost-benefit analysis, to your water attorneys, to the people with no financial interest in a particular solution. Why would you rely on Cal and this battalion of $800 an hour workers when you know they are financially motivated to build the largest, most costly discount plant possible? Why would you waste a million dollars that you have spent preparing an SEIR that is clearly sufficient why wouldn't you respect the will of the voters who overwhelmingly supported Measure J to explore the public takeover of Cal Am? In Delray Oaks, 63% of the voters supported Measure J. Why not leave open the option for a less expensive, expensive expansion now and see how wa increased water rates impact demand? And then, when additional supply is needed, pursue a smaller desal plant with improved technology. Okay, thank Please you. Please vote no on the resolution. We are now going to go to Paul Manuel. Go ahead. You have one minute. Actually, uh, we're. Go ahead, Mr. Manuel. You have one minute. If you can you unmute it. your microphone. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Paul Manuel. I've lived in Marina for 50 years. And I just want to, I'm not going to waste a bunch of time going over the same thing that everybody's been saying, but I just want you guys to do the right thing, which is what the overwhelming public input is asking you to do and vote no. Thank you. Thank you. We are now going to go to uh, Folsom. I believe um, her husband wants to speak now. Go ahead. You have one minute. If you can state your name for the record. Hello, uh, my name is Paco Morales, and I, um, I'm from Karma Valley, of course. Um, uh, I just want to say this, uh, Mr. Galiori wants to limit everyone's comments to one minute. So let me say something. I want, I won't be, I go, I won't be glad <laughs> that to vote unknown and this terrible resolution and can and call a vote of no confidencing on Galiotis. Thank you. We are now going to Kenneth Rutherford. Go ahead, you have one minute. Thank you, I appreciate the opportunity to speak. I am also a Delray Oaks resident. And I um, want to remind you that this is a special meeting called after last week, so it was sped up and now you're reducing public comments to one minute. It is a little concerning that these are the actions being taken when it's such an important issue regardless of whether someone wants to call it a filibuster or not, it's our opportunity to speak and address you. I would ask you to vote no on the resolution for Mr. Gagliotti. I'm disappointed in his representation of my city. Many of the residents here, 63% voted for Measure J. I would also ask you to take into context his actions since November of last year. He was instrumental in making sure this was labeled a backup and not an alternative. He tried to suppress the SEIR from the Coastal Commission's consideration. He refused to work with staff to have his concerns addressed with the SEIR before it came up for a vote. He refused to answer questions of his constituents. I, again, I have much more to say, but my time is out. I urge you to vote against the resolution. We are now going to Therese Kohler. Go ahead, you have one minute. Ms. Kohler, go ahead. You have one minute. Hi. Thank you, board. This is Therese Kohler, East Garrison. I urge the board to vote no on this resolution for the many reasons stated this evening. I agree with Wayne Kelly's comment recently that it is upsetting that this resolution even is being, even is being considered. Please certify the final SEIR for the Pure Water Monterey expansion. I am concerned about the one minute limit it is the board's responsibility to listen to the public during public comment time. A one minute limit seems overly harsh and punitive. Why wouldn't you want to hear from all of us, the public who are taking their time to report to you their view on very critical matters? Last but not least, please give Marina Coast Water District the three weighted votes it deserves. This should have been done weeks ago. Thank you. We are now going to Chip Wilkins. Go ahead, Mr. Wilkins. You have Hi, one this, minute. This is Howard Wilkins, uh, Council for Marine Coast Water District. I'd first like to object to the one minute that I'm allowed to speak, as well as the one minute you've provided to the residents and people who you're supposed to represent. This clearly can't be a filibuster. Uh, there's no filibuster rules relating to your board procedures. It's impossible to do. What this is, is a lot of people who are concerned that you're not even giving them a minute to comment when you notice this meeting on Friday and nobody saw the resolution that was proposed to comment on until this weekend. So they're not provided ample time to provide written comments and now not provided ample time to even orally comment. I supplied a letter to you this evening in response to uh, your council's uh, email to me on Saturday this Labor Day weekend. Uh, that letter outlines why this vote is unnecessary, why in taking this vote uh, you likely are breaching your fiduciary duties as M1 board members, 
in order to advance interests that are not in M1's uh, favor. So uh, I'll close there. Thank you. <laughs> we are now going to M. Zefferman. Go ahead, you have one minute. Hey, your board got it right the first time. Uh, the pure water moderate expansion is a viable backup to CalAMP's desal plant. And the only thing that's changed is that CalAMP supporters are now worried that their desal plant will not be built if expansion goes forward. What I'm most confused about is a seeming desire from some on this board to give CalAM their first draw in the Salinas Valley Basin. CalAM's advertised corporate strategy is to expand by taking over neighboring public water districts that are in distress. And marina residents who you've been hearing from tonight have been fighting to keep CalAM out of our groundwater and to keep their desal plant from increasing salt in our aquifer. We're worried that Calum's long game is to ruin our groundwater enough that we won't have any choice but to buy unaffordable desal bulk from Calum's conveniently oversized plant. I mean, just look at how Cam has exploited Castroville's existing groundwater intrusion program problem to get them dancing to Calum's tomb, all for the promise of a few hundred acre feet of Marina's groundwater. After Calum takes over Marina, whose jurisdictions will they be for, come for next? Bronda Salinas? Soon you'll be like Peninsula residents who have been fighting for decades to get Calum off the river and out of their aquifer. Now you want to bring them to yours. Your residents and children will be fighting this fight in decades to come. We are now going to Kevin Saunders. Go ahead, Mr. Saunders. You have one minute. Mr. Saunders, please ensure that your microphone is not on mute. We are going to Catherine Crockett. Go ahead, Ms. Crockett, you have one minute. Hi, this is Catherine Crockett, Seaside resident and chair of Sustainable Seaside. Monterey One Water's mission is a clear and concise statement. It reads, Monterey One Water is dedicated to meeting the wastewater and water recycling needs of our member agencies while protecting the environment. To deny certification of the Pure Water Monterey expansion project would amount to a breach of the public's trust and a failure to serve the best interest of your water customers who depend on a reliable water source, reliable water sources that are both cost efficient and environmentally sustainable. I'll end with appreciation for the Monterey One Water staff for their hard work in bringing Pure Water Monterey online. The project has been lauded as a model of innovation and the wave of the future for the rest of California. I urge the board to vote no on this resolution. Thank you for your consideration. We are going to go to Kevin Saunders. Mr. Saunders, are you there? Uh, let's go to um, owner. You have one minute. Go ahead. If you can state your name for the record, go ahead. Are there any other people people that want to speak? Uh, yes. Go ahead. Alexander Henson. Um, I am an attorney in Carmel Valley, and therefore I don't get to vote on any of the board members. However, I would offer my services as an attorney to draft a recall petition for those people in Delray Oaks who are dissatisfied with the representation that they are receiving. Um, and then I also wanted to say that I find it incomprehensible that the board of directors of <clears throat> a project to provide recycled water is refusing to promote a recycled water project. I just find that incomprehensible. And I urge you to vote no on this resolution. Thank you. We are going to try Kevin Saunders one more time. Go ahead, Mr. Saunders. Please ensure that your microphone is not muted. We will go to Anthony. Go ahead. You have one minute. Anthony, go ahead.
Anthony Tristall? Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, Anthony Tristall with Surfrider Foundation. Uh, 10,000 acre feet of recycled water has been flowing into the bay since sometime in the 90s. And so I think the extension could easily pump excess water into all of our overdrafted basins, building resilience for the future and allowing next gen desal to continue to develop before we put in 20th century desal. It would be using less energy, producing less pollution, and all in all be a better solution. So I would urge a vote no. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other, uh, Troy Ishikawa? Go ahead, you have one minute. Thank you. It's come to our attention, if this SEIR is not certified, the Water Management District will have to pay the entire $1 million for the SEIR. Is this board trying to get out of the 250000 it committed to the SEIR by passing this resolution? Your board agreed to do this SEIR. It agreed to be a backup plan. You are proving that this board cannot be trusted to keep its word on anything. Please vote no on this resolution. Thank you. Ellen Hoffa, you have one minute, go ahead. Yeah, on behalf of the 29,000 residents I represent in the city of Monterey, our residents need a secure water supply and they also need an affordable water supply. Um, the proposed expansion is the most affordable water supply and I hope that you will consider that. I know in your resolution you're concerned about protecting the Castroville aquifer, but you would be taking from the Salinas and Seaside aquifer to um, move forward with the proposed desal. Also, your fiscal situation for Monterey One would be strengthened by expanding the um, water supply project. And so I urge you to reject this uh, resolution. Thank you. And then I believe Gary Krieger, have you already spoken? I think you might have. Um, my name is Katie Krieger. We're sharing the same computer. Go ahead. Yes, I'd like to, um, I'm a resident of Delray Oaks. And I'd like to urge the board to vote against the resolution. I'd also like to urge the attorney from Carmel Valley to leave a message on Nextdoor so that we can get in contact. <laughs> and thank you for your time. And I don't see any more people that want to speak, Chair Stefani. Thank you, Chai. So we'll take it to the board now. Get the participants list. Okay, looking for any hands up that want to speak. Tyler? Yeah, Tyler, you're up first. Okay. Um, so bear with me here. I, I I have a lot of comments in regards to the resolution as it's written. So I'm just going to kind of go through um, where I start having some concerns. Um, so there is on page two. There was a whereas that identified comments um, in regards to the lack of support for the SEIR. I'm trying to find it and I apologize. I'm lost in my spot here. Uh, yeah, so this is the second to last whereas 50 comment letters were submitted in response to the draft SEIR, many of them raising significant and meaningful issues related. So 
Um, I think it's important for our resolution to recognize that the majority of the comments were um, in support of us um, uh, supporting the SEIR. And so I, I think it should properly reflect that, I think, to identify the pretty much split vote on this board. Um, I think it's significant because it gives this appearance that um, even though it says many, it gives this appearance and, and false, falsely so that there's a majority of comments that are um, identifying significant and meaningful issues. Um, uh, I'd also like to point out, um, so if you go to the, the whereas on uh, top of page two, um, I, I'd just like to go through each of those points there. So the first one, SER does not adequately address the number of comments. Okay, so actually that kind of speaks to the one I was just speaking to, but um, the city of Salinas and the Monterey County Water Resources Agency um, expressing concern um, in regards to source water. And so I just like to get clarity from staff in regards to the issue um, surrounding source water, particularly for the city of Salinas. So, go ahead, go ahead, Paul. Okay. So, um, let me start off with this. And then, of course, Alice Amamura is on the line and she can uh, clarify things as well. So, in reference to, and this is specific to the Pure Water Monterey expansion SEIR, so that 2250, the analysis in the SEIR, I believe, and Allison can confirm. We did not show use of any of the agricultural industrial water from the city of Salinas. So when we say water rights from Salinas, I'm not exactly sure what that is referencing because there was no ag wash water in the mix for the uh, expansion project. Now, in reference to Monterey County Water Resources, as I've stated before, um, generally everything is covered within the amended and restated water recycling agreement. However, uh, water Resources Agency and us do have a difference of opinion in water that is considered outside of our 2001 service boundaries. As defined in the agreement, it says outside of those boundaries, we share the water 50%, 50%. Um, we believe that certain water at our treatment plant should be shared 50-50. Water Resources has a difference of opinion and I think we recognize that and we just need to work through it. Um, Allison, do you have any other comments in reference to those two specific items Tyler asked about? Uh, good evening, Chair Stefani and members of the board. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Great. Um, so I think the question was regarding the Salinas agricultural wash water and whether or not the SEIR considered use of that to meet the proposed modification to the expansion demands. And there's two answers to that question. We had to look at the full breadth of environmental impacts. Um, the base project EIR assumed that the program would use that source water to meet the yields for the base project. Um, for the expansion project analysis, we assumed that those waters would still be diverted for the use, by, by, for the use of creating influent for the AWPF for the base project. Um, in, in response to comments from the city of Salinas, the SEIR included a new set of analyses to, to look at whether or not the project could function if the city of Salinas were to not enable that water to continue to be used by the Pure Water Monterey project expansion. And so therefore, we wanted to make sure that we addressed as much of a range of potential future conditions related to uh, availability of source waters. And that's where uh, Paul referenced Appendix M and the fact that that analysis showed that we did not need to have the city of Salinas uh, agricultural wastewater as an influent in order to meet the proposed modifications. Okay, so uh, when maybe when we get to a, a further point of discussion, thank you, um, you both for, for providing a response to that question. 
when we get further along here, I'd be interested in hearing a response from um, Gloria on that point. Um, now that it seems it, there doesn't seem to be an issue, I guess it's not just now, but I think there seems to be some confusion around this. So I think we should really narrow down on this and be specific in regards to what the concerns are. Um, but despite this, um, and, and given the fact of, of what staff and, and consultants have showed in the in the uh, SEIR, there are no environmental impacts in regards to this first point. Moving on to the next one, um, issues regarding supply and demand. Um, so as has been pointed out earlier by some in the public, recent studies, um, including by Lon Howes, Peter Meyer, and Dave Stroll, um, have all come to generally similar conclusions. Um, and again, these are recent studies. These are things that we're looking at closer to today, um, as opposed to the CalM EIR study that was done in 2017 and was used by the CPUC. So I think it's important that if we are referencing a uh, a supply and demand study that was done three years ago, how are we recognizing um, studies that have been more recent and by experts in the field that are seen as um, as professionals throughout the throughout the United States? How can we invalidate their uh, the work that they've done? Um, and with that, there are no environmental impacts. So moving on to the third point um, in regards to Castroville and Salinas Valley groundwater basin, it seems like um, the concerns in, in that um, an expansion would not provide enough water to Castroville. So on one hand, we're saying we don't need desal, but on the other, the argument is made for doing desal just so we can provide enough water to Castroville. So desal, a $1.2 billion project should be done just for 700 acre feet of water to Castroville. Again, I'm not seeing any environmental um, impacts. Moving on to the next one, which is in regards to um, this, not, this study not being done as an alternative or a cumulative project. Um, the plan from the get-go was very clear. Um, the time for this concern was when we voted unanimously to give staff direction and execute the use of 1.3 million to do the environmental study. So I, I don't understand how this concern is being brought back now. We're the, we are looking at the environmental impacts of a study that we authorize staff to do, not other things that we're trying to go back and make reference to now. So I, I again, um, not seeing the environmental impact there. Um, the next one is speaking to inadequate, unstable, um, financially infeasible, um, and inadequate to meet the water demands. Um, so I asked, how is it inadequate? I, I think just saying that it's inadequate, unstable, um, financially infeasible, we need to, if we're gonna put this in there, which I don't think we should, but if we're gonna put this in there, we need to be specific because it's too broad and I think limits us to come back in the future and provide any clarity that might be needed in regards to the individuals that have concern with us moving forward with the SCIR. Um, and then financial infeasibility, I don't see how that's connected to environmental impacts. So again, no environmental impacts, I'm not seeing this. Um, moving on to the next one in regards to the deadline um, of December, uh, 31, 2021. Um, I guess the question here is, which would take longer to develop? Um, and, and I think the reason why, again, we did this was to provide a backup solution. So even though it goes beyond a certain date, mind you, there's been a lot of delays, particularly because of members of this board, um, 
the, the idea here is to have an alternative solution, um, which was brought up by a request to do a resolution by members of this board that now oppose uh, a certifying the SCIR. So if we're declaring it an alternative, but yet, so I think there's just, there's mixed messages going on from um, opponents to um, certification. Um, and then no sufficient water, the last bullet there. Um, can, so, so the fact of there not being sufficient water on the peninsula cannot be pinned on this project alone and cannot be rationalized in a way to make it sound like an environmental impact. Um, it does not raise adequate, appropriate environmental impact. So I don't even, this one just needs to be nixed. I don't even see the relevance in this being on here amongst all the other ones, but I think we can debate these and I think we should take our time to have some deep conversation about each and every one of these. Um, there's also a whereas, uh, regarding further environmental analysis um, will not correct those problems. Uh, yeah. Um, so in regards to that, it contradicts the resolution to um, shelve and potentially look at a late, to, at a, coming back and looking at this at a later date. So if we're saying this, um, you know, we're, we're basically saying on one hand, this project is no good. And then on the other hand, we're saying, well, let's shelve it for now. We can come back to it later. We, it's one or the other, we can't say both. So just, I think we need to clarify that statement in regards to how we move forward with the resolution. Um, this is not looked at as a project. So. We as a board, we're not tasked with looking at this as a project feasibility, despite many on this board um, seeing otherwise. This current process was to simply take the time to evaluate what staff and consultants have spent over a million dollars on, the SEIR, which clearly indicated no significant environmental impacts that had a better alternative. Up to this point, this board has only been tasked with reviewing environmental impacts, despite the fact that some chose to do analysis of project viability is irrelevant. The rest of us haven't given that opportunity because we simply focused on environmental impacts. Um, there's no need to address issues with our Pure Water Monterey project. We could add shallow well issues, the extension of comment review period for the SEIR on the request of those who oppose the expansion project. Um, the 2.3 magnitude earthquake in Soledad next week, or last week, we can add all of these things and many, many others, but it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. It, it's, we're, we're trying to tack on all these things in regards to environmental impact, which is completely irrelevant. Um, so the last whereas that I'd like to make a comment to um, is in regards to the, which seems to be the most relevant whereas in regards to the issues from the board, um, is in regards to the devote, voting resources and, and the impacts to uh, COVID-19. Um, this is based on the fact that we didn't come to a vote either way at our initial meeting. So it's not like we voted not to certify or we voted to certify. And so I think it's important that we um, dictate that in any resolution that we potentially pass. Um, to just say that, oh, we can't do it because of other resources or COVID-19, I think now that time has passed and any effort for the board to continue discussion on certifying SEIR at this point um, would detract us from current issues, um, which, you know, I think that's the argument that's being made, and, and I can kind of understand that. Um, I think it needs to be clear that at this point, given the fact of these conditions, so that's my point there, and I'm going to end here with a, a few other comments. Um, at the onset, uh, Paul made a statement in regards to, and, and I didn't see it in here, and I, I may have missed it in the resolution, but directing staff to work 
connect more with ag. Um, and I think it's important for us to be very clear and specific around what more means. Um, to just kind of have this general more thing as if staff isn't doing that um, is a disservice to the work that our staff is doing. Uh, again, I think um, uh, Supervisor Phillips made a, a comment at the beginning, um, and 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 I think part of that, and I could be I could have taken it the wrong way. A part of that is for us as a board to provide clarity to staff. So I think if we um, are going to indicate that somehow, whether it's in the resolution or not, we need to be very specific and clear um, to staff. There was also a comment uh, made by I think it was Rick. Aldinger, um, and he had identified in his statement about representing the 55,000 uh, em employed. Um, and I think it's just a little bit of a mischaracterization. I would just be really careful to not make this assumption that because you represent employers that employ 55,000 people, that all 55,000 of those individuals are in support of um, this resolution or tearing down um, expansion backups. So I just want to make sure it's clear. Um, and then, you know, I guess I just question, why are we rushing this vote um, on a resolution? I don't think we need to do it at all, but why rush it? Why don't we take the time? And I, I hope that we go through this bit by bit and have a conversation on every topic. Um, but if opponents, um, to certification, we're okay with delaying certification on the request of other opponents. Um, why not now? Why can't we allow a little bit of a delay, even though it seems like we're not going to be moving forward as a board anyway? So why does it matter? Why are we rushing? What is the rush to this? Um, and I think it speaks to some of the concerns around people that wanted more time to share their comments. Um, and, and, and I specifically say this because of the concerns surrounding Marina Coast Water District's um, potential other vote. And so I think it's important that we figure out that issue first before we go down too far down a path where we're gonna be creating issues with Marina Coast not justifiably having um, at least that be considered. Um, if the concern isn't over putting all of our eggs in the desal project, then this resolution should at least recognize the obvious split vote on this board. Um, Mrs. Med uh, Ms. Medina Dixon, this is a little bit of a side note, but thank you for not only tuning in, um, but speaking publicly and watching a public meeting with your young ones and your family. I really appreciate that. It's super awesome that you have little ones that are listening to things about water. I just, that was super inspiring to me and I needed to point that out. So thank you um, for speaking up tonight. Uh, and also a, a, a thank you to Beverly, who spoke um, from the Citizens Committee with the Salinas Groundwater Basin. Seems like there's general support in regards to citizens, not special interests. So I think that's really important to point out. Um, and just my last comment here to the general public, um, I think it's important to make sure that the California Coastal Commission is 100% clear that the board majority is focused on protecting desal at the expense of the ratepayers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. Looks like Director Phillips is up next. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I you know, we we pretty pretty much thrashed this out at the last meeting, and if it had been on it differently, we would have voted then. But. Uh, 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 I'm, you know, unless other people have something to say, I'm ca calling for the uh, question, and, uh, but subject to my uh, uh, colleagues having a, a, a say. But um, I think it's uh, clear to me um, that that the resolution is justified by the evidence that we saw in the EIR, and and as the majority of this board concluded. And uh, uh, I think let's get it over with and make. Rule on the motion. Thank you. Okay, and that's a motion. You, you a motion. should say, uh, Mr. Chair, this is Rob. Usually, yes. a motion uh, to call for the question uh, after only one board member right. has spoken. 
uh, is no, probably, probably. I plan on letting them all speak, Rob. Uh, there you go. Yeah. All right, that, that's what I would say. That I think the, the motion is uh, entirely uh, appropriate, but there should, should first be the opportunity to hear from all the board members. I would okay, say too. Chair, I, if I could, I would just like to point out my understanding, and I guess this is to Rob too, in regards to call to question means that we stop conversation and then we vote to decide whether we continue conversation or stop it. So if called a question, it doesn't matter if only one person has spoke or not. I, I just wanted to clarify that because I called the question before and then the conversation continued after I called a question. And if we're following Robert's rules of order or whatever, we need to make sure that we're following a, a consistent policy. So I think if the question is being called by board member Phillips, Let's just vote and, and or maybe he rescinds his call to question and he can call it when he feels like it's appropriate. I'll rescind it. Okay, Tom Moore, you're up next. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Stefani. Um, with respect to calling a question, that is a motion, which means it does require a second. Um, but thank you, Director Phillips, for withdrawing. Um, I'd like to point out some and I won't take up a lot of time, just point out a not quite random sampling, but a sampling of the defects in this resolution. For example, on page two, the second bullet alleges that uh, the SEIR makes a conclusion about long-term water supply and demand that is contrary to the CPUC demand determination. Um, so I have a question for staff on that. Uh, is it not so that the Monterey Plants Water Management District has produced a more recent supply and demand uh, estimation approved by their board? Is that true? Is that to me? Who are you asking? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that, well. I saw that meeting. It was, it went four, went four to three approved. So it was approved. Yes. Uh, in addition, uh, is it also true that a renowned national water expert by the name of Peter Meyer has produced an independent analysis recent of supply and demand, which concludes, uh, number one, that the Monterey Peninsula Water Management District supply and demand uh, is essentially correct, uh, that the uh, Hazen report by Hazen and Sawyer is essentially wrong and contains many defects and that the CPUC demand determination is now old and overcome by events like people conserving water. Is that also a true statement, Mr. Shudo? So my understanding is that there have been two demand studies done beyond uh, the one at the Water Management District Unfortunately, I have not reviewed them carefully enough to respond to that question. I, I don't know if any of our staff has, when I say staff, I mean Allison, um, but I am aware that there are studies out there. All right, thank you. Um, so I guess my question on the second bullet is, why are we cherry picking facts here? Don't disagree that the CPUC did a different demand determination that's now old and obsolete, and we have at least two uh, more recent ones that disagree with it. <clears throat> and yet this resolution conveniently ignores those latter two facts. So that's a defect uh, in the second bullet. Uh, in the third bullet, um, I guess I don't understand why an SEIR for an expanded project to provide water to the Monterey Peninsula has to somehow evaluate uh, what? Environmental impacts on the community of Castroville? There's, there's a whole series of assumptions that you have to make to even get to a connection. I mean, I guess we could write a bullet in here that says, and this would be a true statement, that the SEIR fails to properly evaluate potential impacts of expanded pure water Monterey on the city of Sacramento, California. But it's irrelevant. Uh, and again, 
going back to cherry picking, if you're going to make some extension about the impacts uh, on Castorville, why is there no mention of impacts uh, here or concerns, equal concerns about impacts on the Ord community or on Central Marina? Um, the fourth bullet, well, this is really, really disingenuous. This is uh, unbelievably disingenuous. This board went through a process and voted unanimously to call Purewater Monterey expansion a backup. Uh, if there were concerns back then about the SEIR uh, not evaluating this as an alternative or a cumulative project, those should have been raised back then. And those who voted to call this a backup project should have refrained from doing so. Um, so I, that one boggles my mind. Um, we get to the next bullet. The project description is inadequate and unstable. Um, no evidence for those particular uh, adjectives. Um, why would we put something in this resolution uh, with no evidence whatsoever? Um, and then I have a question for Mr. Wellington. Um, Mr. Wellington, isn't the budget process we go through, isn't that essentially an authorization to spend money, an authorization provided to staff because they're the ones who sign off on checks, et cetera, et cetera. Mr. Wellington? I think you're muted, Rob. <clears throat> yeah, you're still muted, Rob. We love this technology, don't we? Took care of it. Okay. The, there you go. the answer to your question is, if you can hear me now, yes. Is that, yes, the, 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 the budget process does outline uh, the, uh, the goals and anticipation of how uh, funds of the uh, agency are to be spent. Okay. And that's an authorization to staff. And, and what consequences do you think would arise? If let's say staff decided to, uh, you know, pick some line item and spend five times what was budgeted for that line item. Well, first of all, I, I can't envision staff doing that. Oh, I can't either. I'm just Second, asking what if. Secondly, I, I would indicate I would think that the uh, you know the board would have general authorization to uh, object to and and possibly put a halt to such an expenditure. Right. So Mr. Shuto, is, is there a budget for Pure Water Monterey for that project? Yes, there is. And have you been spending in accordance with that budget? Yes, we have been, yes, we have. And have you been spending over that budget? No. Uh, in total, no, we have moved line items between the budget, but there is an upper limit because, well, we have a loan limit and uh, frankly, our staff does a phenomenal job tracking all the various expenditures. So you've been complying with all the budgetary rules with respect to Pure Water Monterey. Yes. And following the direction of the board. So yeah. it seems to me the phrase substantially over budget appears to be a lie. And I don't know why we would want to include a lie in a resolution. Um, and I will simply, I have more disgruntlements with the resolution, but I will leave it at that. Thank you, Tom. Um, Jason, you're up next. Jason? Yes, thank you, Chair. All right. Um, all right. Um, yeah, thank you. I, um, this is, this is obviously a really tough one, uh, for me. And, um, 
and I've, I'm basically sitting in my car doing this, uh, uh, doing this it was a surprise meeting. So, I, so I'm sorry about the quality of the, uh, the uh, recording and the voice here, but um, I, my my other um, and my colleagues have done a great job discussing the resolution. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that to them. I'm just gonna give you an overall picture of what I'm what I'm seeing here. Um, unfortunately. Um, if today's resolution is approved by the board, um, it will do tremendous harm to the to the residents of the peninsula. For decades, we have wanted more water, and the expansion is clearly the most promising source for what nearly everyone universally wants. Um, it's uh, recycled water is proven technology, and um, it's clearly feasible on every level. And it's and it has the ability to produce water at a relatively low cost compared to those other alternatives out there. You know, I got to say the public tonight was um, gave us really sound reasoning on why we should. Uh, uh, not uh, adopt this resolution tonight. I mean, I was I was very impressed with their knowledge. Um, clearly, they've uh, thought it through, and I also kudos to them for uh, for um, giving all that that praise to staff, which deservedly staff um, you know should get that praise because they've done an incredible job again providing water for the peninsula. The first first water project I think we've. Um, we've had in as long as I can remember. So, uh, so yeah, kudos to staff for that. Um, but the thing about um, adopting a resolution at hand, and again, I'm not going to repeat what the public said, but I just want to point out that sometimes this board um, claims an authority or an expertise that, um, you know, it's, it's, I guess self-perceived, but um, it's just it's beyond it's it's just beyond what I what I imagine this board really um, knows as a whole. I mean, during the uh, SEIR, just as an example, um, discussions were um, were made. Uh, the true experts were ignored, the, uh, and some some were actually um, disparaged, which was kind of a shame. But um, you know, the misplaced, just as an example, misplaced authority that the board shows is um, in um, is in, in discussing finances in terms of the CEQA. Everyone should know that finances have nothing to do with CEQA, but apparently um, our um, the board doesn't always recognize that. And that's just one example of, um, of uh, an authority that I don't, I, I just, don't think this board really has demonstrated. Um, and now this, this uh, unfortunately, the board makes another assumption, uh, assumed authority, which I really don't think it has. And that is, um, and that's, uh, that's basically used to justify the suppression of, of um, people's votes, of people's power. And I brought this up at the last meeting that uh, Marina Coast, we wouldn't even be here today if Marina Coast had gotten its third vote. We wouldn't even be here because we know how Marina Coast voted. The last vote would have been a tie. And I believe that was the proper way to count it. But unfortunately, um, the board has delayed their ability to vote. It is, they used, the, the majority of the board used their power to suppress a minority that is just not the way um, democracies should function. And then all of that based, I'm gonna quote, I think what a, what a member of the board said, based on the idea we need time to vet the numbers, the populations. The board is pretending that people don't exist in Marina Coast District. The board is, is, is assuming this authority that we are actually in a position that we can vet the Census Bureau and the state to the Department of Finance and their numbers on population. This board is not not capable of, I, I have, I mean, it's absurd that we'd even uh, 
<laughs> take that on. Think that we should be taking that on. So anyway, I just um, I'm hoping that when all this is said and done, um, uh, if this if this resolution is adopted tonight, justice will be served. People's votes will be counted accurately, and um, and uh, we will we will see some of these um, these these votes uh, overturned. And and I hear somebody like stomping on my my um, my speech here, but okay, I'll, that's all I have to say for now. Okay, thank you, Jason. Yeah, there's some feedback issue going on. Okay, any other board members comments? Gloria. Uh, Your Honor, can you hear me? Yeah, Nick. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. All right. So, um, yeah, no, I don't. I don't think we should. I, I think I said this a little bit last meeting, but I don't think we should uh, go forward with this resolution. I don't. I don't see why we'd want to foreclose any water options. Uh, again, the, as I've said from the beginning, and from my perspective. Uh, the chess game of the Coastal Commission is really not where our head needs to be. We just want to have good projects from our agency. And uh, so that's that's what I think we should focus on. And, and this may not have been the right iteration of this project, but I think it could happen and it could be remedied. So I would want to not vote to support the resolution and keep this keep some you know some potential there for a, a water source for that we that we so sorely need thank you okay thank you nick how do i say hi hello Gloria, go ahead yes um okay uh i'm going to respond to i'm going to try to respond to to tyler's question about the ag the ex the expansion assumes our ag water is part of the project so anyways um i am going to vote to pass the resolution as it is and um we have the right to agree and disagree it's a long night we still have other issues to tend to and so i would like to make a motion to approve the resolution thank you Gloria. Um, do we have a second? Second. Okay. Tyler, you got your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I guess I just like to follow up on that, Gloria, because I, I think it was clear from the staff comments that it, it's it's only connected into the extent that the base project utilizes the ag the ag wash water so i guess i'd like to follow up what per, what understanding do you have in regards to the expansion utilizing additional source water i guess i i, I think it's important to for us to clarify that and um i also hope to hear from uh board member greer i i kind of sense that you're perhaps a swing vote here. And I think it's important if we move forward with this resolution as it's written, you're supporting literally everything it says. So it, is, is that the case? And um, is there a way that we can adjust any of the text in the, in the resolution as it's written so that we can have a better representation of where perhaps um, some kind of agreement in regards to where the, the board feels in general. Board member Greer, let's so, Yeah. Chairman. Yeah, Linda, you want to respond? Yes. Sure. So my, the concerns I have, um, well, I have concerns with this resolution to some extent. Um, one of the things that's been that keeps popping into my mind is this is 
we're looking to certify the supplemental EIR in order to, when we originally voted to move forward with the supplemental EIR for the expansion, we pretty much all anticipated that we would be online and have vetted, had some time with water going into the program as anticipated or at least somewhat close to it. We've had um, collapsed shallow wells. We don't have the water going into the deep wells as anticipated. So my concern is that this supplemental EIR is based on perhaps inadequate information from the original EIR from the original project. That's where my concerns come from. Mm -hmm. I in favor of killing the expansion project. I think we've jumped into this and I'm in, I'm fully in this myself. We jumped into this expansion way too soon in the process. We are not nearly where we need to be with um, seeing the project that we're trying to get online still. And just for all the general public people, I'm not a vote elected official. I was appointed to this position and anybody, that's all I have to say <laughs> currently. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, um, any other board members and we'll go back to Tyler. Well, I was just, I was just wanting to follow. I mean, I think there was a point there um, for Gloria as well. So I'm hoping that we get a response from her. And then I'm also hoping that we can hear from staff in regards to um, board member Greer's point um, uh, regarding inaccurate, inaccurate, inadequate information regarding changes that may have occurred since the, de the development of the um, SEIR. And then my, I guess my question generally kind of still stands, um, uh, Linda. So if there's concern with it, I think it's valid and important and fair to the public, whether we're elected or appointed to give that um, do justice for a dialogue on what's appropriate um, uh, for the public. Because I think that if you are uncomfortable with the, with the resolution as it's written, you could vote no against it and it will kill the resolution. But if you want the resolution to pass and there's things in it that you feel like we can adjust, and, and if I, since I'm, I have four for a second, I'll just kind of identify really whittling it down here, I think where we could find some some safe space to perhaps move forward. Um, I think we need to clarify um, specifically on page three and the last two conditions um, regarding agreements with the um, MCWRA and Salinas. And then uh, issues regarding the fiscal solvency, like I think that is irrelevant and I think it's important for us to leave that out. So I think if we do a little bit of wordsmithing here, I think that it might help us get to a space um, that is more appropriate. But I, I guess I don't quite know where you are seeing the, the issue. So I think maybe that would be a good place to start. Can I address those okay. issues? Go ahead, Linda. Chairman? Yes. Um, so Chairperson Williamson, one of the original uh, up on the resolution is the whereas over 50 comment letters and um, that whereas I think we need to have in there the there's going to be comment letters on both sides of any project that comes forward I, I think that's pretty much a given I don't think we need to have that whereas in there on page two um, the first bullet point where we have uh, the city of Salinas water rights. The Agwash is not included, if I'm correct, the mm -hmm. Agwash water is not actually included in the, in the numbers for the expansion meeting the needs. The Marina Coast Water Resource Agency, the difference in between outside the boundaries, that is something that definitely needs to be addressed before we sh should be moving forward with anything because that's, that, that gives a, a delineating, that's a delineating factor. Um, 
on the fifth bullet point there, the project description is inadequate and stable. Uh, there, that goes back to my original concerns with, you know, we're doing a supplemental EIR on, a, on an original EIR that seems to be bearing some bad fruit to it. So the unstableness would go back to the issues that we're having with the current project not proving itself, at least not at this point in time. Um, the third, the second whereas on there, as far as wordsmithing goes, the expansion project, um, the expansion project described in the final, e the final SEIR as an, as an alternative to desalination is infeasible at this time. Um, it's always been proposed to be a, in addition to as a backup plan to desal. Uh, this goes back to the multitude of comments regarding the three-legged stool. We need to have both of these options viable. The problem is, over the past eight to ten months, both sides of this desal argument have muddied the waters so that it's an either-or option, and I am not in favor of an either-or option, which means if approving this resolution in order to keep the desal project moving forward, then that's what I'm going to vote for because it should never come down to we either have pure water expansion or the desal. And those in favor of killing the desal have made their point that that's what they want done and have the pure water as the only sole mm -hmm. source of water. We are a not a water purveyor. Our job is to take care of all the sewer and all the impaired waters. If we can clean those up and send them out to not just Monterey, but to all of the agent, the participating um, agencies, then so be it. But our first and foremost goal is to clean up impaired waters. It is not to be a water purveyor. And this is where I have, this is where my concerns really lie. <laughs> Um, as far as the three, the one, two, and three, on uh, number one, um, it references a reasonably sustained period. I would say we need to have the Pure Water Project, existing pure, pure Water Project, up and running and proving itself for at least a year before moving forward with any kind of an expansion. And on uh, number three, the uh, establishment of reasonably prudent financial reserves. We should have a percentage of what our reserves should be, which we've been talking about with our increases over the last six months or so, have that percentage outlined as to what reserves we need to have in place before we start expending, expending millions more dollars on the expansion, which I have concerns with actually being able to do what it's supposed to do because our original project isn't being as fruitful as we thought it would be. Okay, Mr. Thank Chair. You. Mr. Chair, I'm now calling for the. Okay, Supervisor Phillips, you're what now? I'm calling for the question. So you're making a motion. I'm going to, didn't we already make a motion? There's a motion? No, there's a motion and a second on the floor. A second. Yes, I'm calling for the question now. Chair, I believe Gloria uh, put the motion out there and Supervisor Phillips seconded earlier. Okay. That is correct. Okay. Is there a second? Yes. Supervisor Phillips, Supervisor Phillips seconded the motion. And I will want to speak on the second, Chair. Okay, Jason, go ahead. We'll go right down the line here. Okay, let me, uh, um, thank you, Chair. I've, I've pretty much um, uh, uh, described my dismay with what's, with what's going on here because uh, obviously we really need water. Um, I, I'm just gonna make one last um, plea, I think. Um, I don't believe I would sit on a board that would wanna steal water from Salinas. I don't believe I'd sit on a board and, and vote to um, 
to harm Castroville. That's just not, that's just not how I am. And I also think that in this case, everybody in the district is our constituent. I'm not just going to vote in the interest of Monterey Peninsula. I'm going to vote in everyone's interest wherever possible. And, um, and basically I, um, I'm pleading. I'm just the, the, I think the rest of the board members have heard what we're facing here on the peninsula, what the residents here are facing on the peninsula, a company that's looking to the only one I know who's been significantly stealing water, taking water has been Cal Am. And we're very worried about that. So yes, if you want to bring it down to um, whether it's, whether we want to uh, uh, get rid of Cal Am or not, you can, you can frame it that way, but you have to understand why we have the most expensive water in the country already. And that's without the desal plant. So of course we want a backup. Of course we want a viable alternative. So please, I'm, I'm imploring the other board members to think of all the constituents, everyone in this, everyone in this district and, and reject this, this resolution. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I, I, I think when we call for a question, and I think I had a second on it, I think that calls for the question and, and ends debate. Maybe okay. council can. If we were following Robert's rules of order, that would be the, the uh, understanding that I have. This board's never adopted Robert's rules of order, but on, on occasion when we need something that we need to look to, uh, that would be appropriate. Is that not a, through the chair? Yes, Tom. Is not the motion to call the question, if it receives a second, a non debatable motion, which must first be voted on and can be voted down if there is additional debate that the members of the board wish to hear? That's the procedure in Robert's rule. So we, we vote. I mean, we, we, there's been a question that there's, there was a motion made, it was seconded, a question was called, let's go ahead and vote. And then if it, if it fails, then we'll continue to debate. Okay, let's call for the question, Chai. Roll call, please. Could you clarify just for sure what motion we're voting on right now? Public may not understand. I have a motion by member De La Rosa a second by member Phillips to approve resolution 202009 as written. Point of order, through the chair. Yes, go ahead, Tom. I don't believe that's the motion. The motion was to call the question, which received a second. Call no, the that's, that's against debate. No, through, through, the, through the chair, that, that's not how, uh, how I remember it. Uh, Glory, uh, Director De La Rosa called, or called to approve the motion uh, John, uh, Director Phillips seconded that motion. We continued to discuss, and, and then uh, Director Phillips just called for the question. Right, but we're voting on the calling for the question, whether we're going to then vote and end discussion, correct, Rob? That's correct, Your Honor. So this is, this is just the motion. This is just the motion on whether we end debate and vote on the, on the matter. That's correct. Okay, go ahead, Chai. Uh, through the chair, I'm sorry. Um, just two questions. Who seconded the uh, uh, Director Phillips' um, call, the motion to call the question? And two, to cut off debate, does it require a, um, a two thirds vote uh, supermajority? Rob, can you answer that? No, I think it's just a uh, the motion to call for a question is just is subject to a normal a normal vote could be a this could be a vote by a weighted vote if someone calls for a weighted vote. Okay, so I will, and then he, uh, he had another question in regards to who, who seconded it. I have a I second say, by Member Phillips. Phillips made the motion to call the question. So we're not I voting on the motion, we're voting on the call the question. So uh, I'll second the call the question. Um, so I have a motion by member Phillips and a second by member Gagliotti 
to call for the question. And I, I, I would like to uh, call for a weighted vote, please. This is uh, Jason Campbell. Okay, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. All right, try it. let's try it again. Miranda? Yes. Castroville? Yes. County of Monterey? Yes. Delray Oaks? Yes. Marina Coast? No. Monterey? No. Pacific Grove? No. Salinas? Salinas? She's not unmuted. Unmute. Okay. No. There you go. There you go. Yes. Sand City? Yes. Seaside? No. Motion carries 11-10. Okay, thank you, Chai. To the chair, I'd like to raise a point of order, please. Go ahead. Um, so I need to ask Mr. Wellington some questions. I'll try and make them go quickly and keep them simple. These are just yes, no questions, Mr. Wellington. Uh, did you receive copies of the letters from the California Finance Department dated February 12, 2020 and May 12, 2020 that give the size of the population within various areas inside the July 2019 political boundaries of Marina Coast Water District? Those letters were received and provided to the and also provided to the full board. Okay, did the letter from the California Finance Department of February 12, 2020 show the population estimate within the boundaries of Marina Coast Water District to be 36,661? I believe that is correct. Thank you. That's, uh, what, this number that's greater, what the letter said. It's an is estimate. It, is this number greater than 25,000? It's a math test. I used to be a math professor. Yes. Yeah. I hope you I hope your I hope your questions for your at school are a little tougher than this. Yeah, we'll we'll get there. Uh, did the letter from the California Finance Department of May 12, 2020 show the population within the boundaries of Rainy Coast Water District minus the population that lies simultaneously within the city of Seaside uh, and the boundaries of Rainy Coast Water District to be twenty-eight thousand two hundred and thirty three? I don't have that in front of me. That sounds like a correct number. Okay, and I think we can all agree that's greater than 25,000. Does the Joint Exercise of Powers Agreement, uh, have you read the entirety of that agreement? Yes. Uh, does that agreement uh, contain a requirement that a population analysis and report be prepared by Monterey One Water staff before the agency acknowledges a change in the weighted vote of a member. No, it only requires that the board make that decision in with regard to the interpretation of the joint power agreement. And the, and the board decided, as you know, in the letter sent by the board to Marina Coast and it, its lawyer is, is that the board wished to have that matter reviewed, uh, sent to the uh, special projects committee for review. Um, so was that a yes or no answer to my question? Can't be answered yes or no. Well, yeah. So um, I thought we called for the question and we were going to have a vote. Uh, this is this is a point of order about the vote. Uh, my assertion is that the vote failed 11-11. And the reason the vote failed huh? is because None of these issues, such as the requirement for the preparation of a staff report, uh, the requirement for the staff report to go before a committee of the board, um, before acknowledgement of the vote. So uh, let me ask you one other question here, maybe two. Um, 
once a member agency has provided the agency with the most recent population estimate that shows that the member's population has increased to the next higher tier in accordance with section 3.04 of the joint powers, joint exercise of powers agreement, does this agreement contain a provision that allows the agency any reason to delay the acknowledgement of the change in the weighted vote of that member? Only the natural reason for the board to have time to, in, to review and interpret that language to see if it's correct. Um, it, does not have to, it does not have to accept something that's been received on face value without the board looking at it mm -hmm. and discussing it. And this is where in the joint powers agreement? Can you it's point ridiculous. to that language in the agreement? That language is not in the agreement, but with regard to the interpretation of a contract, which the joint powers agreement is, that interpretation is to be made by the board. And the board in connection with making that determination can look into what matters it feels are appropriate. Okay, well, uh, we've registered our objections. Um, we believe the vote is incorrect. Uh, the vote's tied. And our third vote should be and should have been recognized as soon as we provided uh, the information to the board uh, as far back as February. All right, thank you, Tom. Let's call for the question. Roll call vote. And Gloria made the motion and Philip seconded it, right? Right. And I, I recommend. I request a, um, a weighted vote, please. Ms. Jason Campbell again. Okay, Jason. Miranda? No. Castroville? Uh, yes. County of Monterey? Yes. Delray Oaks? Yes. Marina Coast? No. Monterey? No. Pacific Grove? No. Salinas? Yes. Sand City? Yes. Seaside? No. Motion fails 10 to 11. Okay, thank you, Chai. Okay, we'll move into staff reports. Staff reports, Paul? Yeah, so I have none, thank you, Ron. I don't know if anyone else does. I do not. Board member comments, reports. We can move into closed session then. Uh, Going to bed. One, I won't be in closed session. Night. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, before yes. we adjourn to closed session, I want to point out, uh, pursuant to uh, Government Code 54956.9, that the facts and circumstances relevant to the closed session we're about to go into uh, relate to uh, letters from the attorney for the Marina Coast Water District uh, demanding arbitration. Thank you. Who the chair, a chair. board member comment? Yes, go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, to my fellow board members, I know this has been difficult and unfortunately divisive. Um, I hope we uh, figure this out and get beyond this. Um, we may have created a bit of a PR problem for our agency. Uh, I'm sure our staff will work hard to help us figure out how to correct that going forward. Um, certainly want to thank on both sides, all the speakers who took the time tonight to address the board. Um, and uh, just want you to understand that uh, we're all, I hope, trying to do what's best for Monterey One Water overall. Thank you. I, I, I tend to agree. I, I, I worry about this, what, what it's done for our agency. Um, but the question to, 
Director Greer, is there, is there a substitute motion or something that you would think you'd feel more comfortable with uh, after looking at it? Um, I'm not comfortable with the way the resolution is written as is. Um, I think it's got um, very weak points trying to make it seem more substantial like having the whereas over 50 comment letters. Um, I think that there's extraneous information. I think we need to stick with just the the basics, like the modern MR, MCWRA difference of opinion on the outside boundaries, the um, project inadequacy and instability, the inadequacy and instability of the expansion based on the um, original project. So I would like to see it reworked and represented. As a point of order, uh, the chair, the chair. we moved away from that item and we were already going on to board member comments. I think it's irrelevant to try to rehash a conversation. I, I think if we need to, we can bring the discussion back at a later time if that's what the board's direction is, but I'd like to give my board member comments since we seem to have moved on already at this point. Um, uh, so I, I think it's important and I think this conversation, the way that the meeting um, had, how it happened tonight, just in regards to a lot of confusion around, you know, just different aspects of how the meeting should run and function, knowing that we can establish that any way that we want. I think this goes back to your your point, Chair Stefani, in regards to the need for us to have um, a, a strategic discussion retreat. And even though the situation is not ideal for us to meet in person, I think us doing that sooner rather than later, even if it's a short and augmented version that can allow us to figure out how to better function with each other in meetings in the public, I think that it would be relevant for us to do that sooner rather than later. Okay. Any other board member comments? Good point. Okay, so we can move into closed session now. Okay, we're gonna leave this and sign in on another. Uh, I on think another we have to be signed in. I'm gonna go have dinner. Oh yeah, okay, mm -hmm. Tom. Make it short. <laughs> Do the right thing. <laughs> All the time, it's splitting, and all this, and all this, it's me, Rob, and you say, I like.